window and the, the person I was throwing it to made the adjustment. This, this is a catcher <laughs> that just sticks, he stays here. So yeah, it was definitely, definitely a little, hard, a little, a little more nervous than I realized. And I started to sweat and I was like, oh, please don't let this ball slip out. And I throw it over here and hit uh, the Venezuelan guy, you know, Ringifo, if I hit him. Kratz, how do you look? You, you definitely, it didn't matter. Like Felix, he doesn't pitch anymore. So it didn't matter if he didn't make a good pitch, but I'll say you looked way better than Felix. So that is why the U S won. you set the yes. tone. You look, you look fit. You looked ready. That's all that matters. When you're done playing, you bounce it or whatever. That's fine. But if you look good and you're fit, you were, you were ready to go. Even though you're working for the MLB, you look good. Yeah. Thank you. I got, I got some comments. People said, damn, you're looking good. You look like you can still play. I said, I can hit, but can't run. So uh, <laughs> we, got some, we got some problems. There's a position for that, Jonesy. DH. Well, you still got to run the, you still got to run yeah. bases. Yeah. I, I, hey, Jonesy, you can run the bases better than quite a few names I could throw. We could play a game one day called how many uh, guys can Jonesy run the bases better than in better than baseball? That. And I bet you we'd come up with a pretty You mean pretty faster or list. like better? Because if you're talking better. Either I mean, one. We could do two separate shows for it. Better I mean, is not faster. Better is not hard. Better is not hard yeah. at this point. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't faster than some of these guys. I was smarter, like a pool hole. Very smart. But I mean, I had a little more speed, but. I was smart, and I always scored on doubles. So, hitter, weeders loved me. I always some hook doubles that you lefties do down the line. I'm scoring on those. Stakes. Everyone. Jonesy, what would you tell the team? So, we're going to break down the entire weekend, which was super fun to watch, and I'm yeah. sure even better to be there. So, before the USA-Venezuela game, which was a back-and-forth battle, and at one point it looked like they weren't going to be moving on, and Trey Turner had yeah. the grand slam of his life. What did you say pregame? Give us like the entire breakdown, not just of what you said, but how that came about. Like, does D Row call you, the manager yeah. of Team USA, and say, "Hey, come talk to the boys"? So D Row talked to me uh, a couple of days ago, and he was like, "Hey, I need you to come in. Just, just, just. I just need some energy. Just get the boys. You guys know D Row." And so uh, Jerry Manuel grabbed me and was like, "Hey, come and talk to the boys. They're in their hitters meeting." And I just went in there. No, obviously, best is no cameras. And you could just be candid. And I was like, "Dog, y'all gonna have to bring this fucking energy." I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what you're talking about. It's going to be 47,000 Venezuelans out there. It ain't, you, the energy is not going to come from you getting a base hit. It's going to be golf, golf claps for you guys. And I said, you guys individually have to pick each other up. Y'all pimp a single. Jump out the damn dugout for a single like they're going to do. Who cares? Pimp the walk. Pimp every single thing. And you see from the first inning, obviously, scoring three runs helps out. But it's like the whole entire game, they were in every pitch. The fans were in every pitch on both sides, which was fantastic. It was such a great atmosphere. And I just said, you, you, you have to match their energy. Sorry. I mean, Arise, great hitter. He never is gonna, he's never going to bat flip like that and pimp home runs. In this situation, he will. I, t- I told Tim Anderson, if your ass get on base and you stay on base, you're just doing a disservice. Trey Turner, go. Mookie, you, you and Trout. In spring training, who goes first to third on a on, on something that you sh- that's a playoff first to third? You know what I mean? They were going first to third, and making these making these guys um, make these throws. I said, be dynamic, y'all fast, be fast, and they played uh, international style of baseball. Obviously, we, we want the three run home runs like last night was just an onslaught. But Venezuela, they played Latin. I think more of an international Latin style of uh, of game with the energy. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I was at the game. I was at the game. Where are you? Mm-hmm. You're too quiet. What are you tired from the weekend? I'm just listening, letting him go. <laughs> he was going. I'm letting him go. Uh, no, I was there on Saturday night. Listen, it was incredible. It was the one of the best. I mean, I've been to World Series. I've been to All Star games. I've been to every kind of baseball game you could ever be at. Been a part of them, and the the energy and the atmosphere on Saturday night at that game was the best atmosphere. Because it was both sides that were engaged. If you go to a, like a World Series game, there's, you know the home team has more fans. But when you went to that game on Saturday night, it was Venezuela, it was USA. They were both chanting, they were both cheering. And if somebody can tell me what Venezuela, they all stand up and they go like this and they yell this. something. Yeah, but it a, sounds like they're South going America. bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> but I don't know what they were saying. <laughs> and then when they Trey Turner hit the grand slam because it was 2 all the U.S. fans started stood up and yelled. You know, USA, but they were doing the back to them. So, I mean, I don't know if someone on the chat, one of the chats, can come up and tell me what they're saying because I, we couldn't tell what they were saying. It was just like it sounded like they were, you know, bullshit. But it was something that's like every uh, every time they got two strikes, they started doing it. 
So the Argentinians do that when in football, soccer. They they just sit there the whole time, do that, and then would and because uh, I was at the World Cup, they're two handing it. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, if but it, it, it when it's in unison, it looks so it looks amazing when they're in unison. Anytime there was two strikes and they all stood up, it, you can't man again. Like you said, you played in the World Series. That was a World Series atmosphere. It was better. It was better because it was both sides for me. Yeah, because right. it was both. So like when when USA went up, USA fans are crazy, right? And then all of a sudden, Venezuela storms back. We'll, we're going to get into that, but they storm back and take the lead, and the place is going crazy. And Arias hits a second home run and makes it 7-5. And you would have thought Venezuela just won the World Series. They had won the World mm-hmm. Baseball Classic. And then USA, when Trey Turner hit the home run, all the Venezuela people sat down. There was, like, tears in their eyes. And all the USA people stood up and were going crazy. So yeah. th- that's what made it so good. It was both sides. It wasn't just one side cheering and the other side not. It was both the whole game. I feel bad for Luis Arise because, I mean, he had the game of his life, two homers. Wait, you're like, why do you feel bad? Because he's about to start the season with the Marlins, <laughs> oh, and no. he's going to look around <laughs> at the ballpark and be like, wait, did I just get duped? This place was the best party I've ever been to, and now nobody's here. <laughs> I mean, now he's going to be gonna very be confused. He's going he's gonna to look at the stadium and be like, hey, Poppy, you forgot to charge the noise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... It, it didn't I – didn't, I didn't get to see what they were saying. You were saying, you know, they were chanting. But if it's two strikes, you think they were saying, ponche, ponche, ponche? I, I, no, some, some with a C. It was like – it was like, coyo, coyo. I don't know what they were saying, but it, it was something. I, I think don't know that's a bad saying. word. <laughs> a, no, it? not coño. <laughs> no, they were saying some with a – it sounded like some with a C or – I don't know. Somebody please let me know because I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> And for nine innings, they did it every time there was two strikes. Why don't you ask Alex, Th- Alex Thomas, maybe? Mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. mention, by the way, Lance Lynn from Team USA is going to be joining us. I forgot all of the usual things we do. Subscribe. Uh, Alex Thomas from subscribe Team Subscribe would be, yeah. What? Also subscribe, Alex Thomas, Lance Lynn. Yeah, subscribe. The button is on YouTube for you or on the podcast platform that you're listening to. But Alex Thomas and Lance Lynn joining us. We'll have a pretty stacked guest list this week of players that have been participating in the World Baseball Classic. Should have more Team USA members on tomorrow's show as well, um, but Alec Thomas and his team has an absolute battle tonight coming up. Wait, who's, uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, who's pitching for Mexico? Not Taiwan Walker. Patrick right? Sandoval. 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 Who's got good stuff? Is Taiwan Walker in the bullpen, Jonesy? Do you know? I, I don't know, but I was talking to him the day before, the other day, and I was like, when are you starting? I thought he was going to start today, but I guess he will start the championship game potentially. He's not coming no. out the bullpen. He's not coming. No out the way bullpen. is he coming yeah, out. He's you think the coming Phillies out are letting him come Phillies out of the pen? It is not no. happening. So well, I'm just wondering because I mean, who would you rather have start if you're Team Mexico? Team, I mean, obviously uh, Sandoval. Japan I mean, has a great against USA. Japan True. has a lot of lefties. So they Sandoval's try and... not really known for his breaking ball, right? He's more of a changeup guy. Exactly, and that plays right into a left-hander swing. <laughs> you better okay. be throwing him cutter sliders away. Wouldn't you rather have Walker throwing those splits? Yes, and and Velo. The, the thing mm-hmm. is, is the Japanese, they don't necessarily see the velo. So if you got somebody with in Taiwan's 95, you know, a power 95. So you need a little bit of velo. Japan's going to be ready. And they throwing Sasaki tonight. Ugh. I'm going to try to get Alec as best of a, a scouting report as I can. But I'm sure he's got all the information. Have you seen Sasaki? I took him deep, and He never threw me a fastball again. Oh, They kept shit. saying, oh, this kid is like 19, they're 20, just turned 20. Throwing 100. I was like, is he going to throw me a fastball? And they're like, maybe. Like first pitch, split. Next pitch, fork. I mean, I do a split and a fork, then a slider. I'm like, damn, I'm one two because <laughs> they can throw him for strikes. And then I was like, he's gonna throw me a fastball. 98. I took that ball so damn deep, and I looked at him. I didn't see a, two more at bats. I didn't see one fastball. And he's throwing. <laughs> he's he sits a hundred. Like you really that chicken shit? You don't ain't gonna, you throw a hundred? Ain't gonna throw it? Is it a light? <laughs> look, yeah, yeah. And I looked at it the doesn't catcher. move much. No, nah, it's flat as hell. But I looked at the catcher, and I'm like, hey, what's up? I, I told the catcher, I said, I buy you cigarettes, you throw fastball, because all the catchers over there are cigarettes. <laughs> I, said, I buy you cigarettes, fastball. Like, Next pitch, fastball up here. I'm like, oh, shit. I ain't buying you no know, money. Like, deal's off. That is incredible. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm very impressed. I mean, this guy is being talked about as the next big thing in Japan, and he's not going to be here for at least a few years, it sounds yeah. like. He'll still be out in Japan, but like he is the ace. He is the guy, yeah. you know. He's, now that... he's the next Otani. Yes, yes. He's well, Otani. without the hitting, though, he's he's only yeah, a pitcher, right? True. He's the next Otani pitching style. I mean, or, or you could say the next Tanaka. He threw two perfect games this year. 
uh, last year. And he's only going to get better as he gets. He's I think he's 21 now, maybe, maybe 22. So him and Yamamoto are the, are the two top pitchers out of, out of Japan right now. And that's who they have lined up. It's yeah. Suzaki for this one. If they win, it would be Yamamoto against USA. And mm-hmm. there is rumor spreading that it could be Shohei Otani to close out a win if they're in control, which is pretty cool. Be fun to see. Yeah. Face Trout. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That Ooh. would be sick. Bases drunk, yeah. two outs, Otani Trout. <laughs> it would be a good Don't preview of what, uh, what it'll throw look it like up. next year. Who right? wins? Throw it high. Ooh. Who Throw wins? Who wins that battle? Otani or Trout? I got Otani. Trout is struggling right now. Um, yeah, I think that. Ooh, I mean, Otani's best stuff is down. Then that's Trout's haven. Yep. I, We're gonna get plenty I, of I Otani see versus it. Trout next year. And whenever he's in LA, League baseball. When Otani's in when LA. He's anywhere but the Angels. <laughs> I mean, he's what if not you can staying. get? O, what if you can get Otani face top nine, bottom nine, whatever? Betts, Trout, Goldschmidt, Arenado. Be fun. Yeah, because they want to, like, Darvish had the ending in, was it six or, or nine? nine? Was it six or oh nine? Nine. He had the, the finished oh ending nine. of the uh, WBC. Iconic moment. You know, it could be, again, for Shohei, who's obviously still in the show of every damn thing. Dude's awesome. I know USA does not want to take a break right now. I mean, this one for me, I don't like to say this often because it's cocky, but it felt like free money yesterday. The over-under yeah. was 10. I was like, for USA or for the whole game? It was for the whole game. And it was USA. It was. I think they were minus 155 to win. The spread was two and a half for them. And that one, I was like, oh, maybe it ends up being a close game. But I had a hard time seeing the lineup now getting consecutive days, coming off a good scoring day against Venezuela. You do still have studs in there. They're fired up. It's a little bit more of a home game for them versus the Venezuela game. And for... Cuba, the pitching, not great for them. It's it, what, triple A ish level pitching going up against uh, Goldschmidt, Arenado, Mookie Betts, and all down the line. Trey Turner, the nine hitter on fire. I had a hard time seeing the USA not just absolutely punish this Cuba baseball team. And they did. And I sent it all out. And I don't do it often, but before the game, I did send out the tweet. You did. To my friends. You did, yeah. but. I mean, that was, yeah, you're right. Like, the only thing that I, the, the over was easy because I, and then we were texting before the game, and I said, you know, I don't love Wainwright, and he got in trouble in the first because yes. he throws it a little bit slower, and he throws breaking balls, and usually Cuban guys, but listen, Waino, good for you, man. He he got it together, and he gave him a solid start, which is what they needed. Um, but I, I figured the Cubans would score a few runs, so the 10 to me seemed like very low. I thought it would be more like 12, 12 and a half, which is a huge number in any baseball game, but. Seemed like that would be, but ten was that was easy, and then the U.S. plus two and a half after the night before and all the emotion. Minus two and a half, or yeah. minus two and a half. Sorry, yep. uh, that it just seemed like I don't know. Somebody was wanting to give away money last night. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to yeah. me, it worked out. Fraser was all over it too. Yeah, Todd was texting. He he had I think USA seven three or something like nine that. Three, yeah. Nine three, yeah. Nine three, nine three. Because he said take the over. So yeah, for me, it just it's a hard time not seeing the U.S. team score a ton of runs when they're going up against AAA-ish level pitching. So I mean, all the guys they pitched for Cuba were like Elias, uh, the guy who started Elias. Right, Elias. Elias. Yeah. He was in the, wasn't he in the big leagues last year? A little bit? He's been, a little he's bit. He's been up and down. He's been up, he's and, been down. up and down. I mean, yeah. he's had a solid career, they, though. He's yeah, he has, right he has. He's been but around. If he's pitching an all-star game, he's getting, he's getting <laughs> rocked. Jailed. Yeah, and he just did. I mean, <laughs> exactly what happened last night. Yeah, and that's how USA has to win these games anyway. I mean, they could yeah. have won a close game, a lower scoring game, but like my whole thing going into this tournament was the pitching's just okay. If USA wins, they're going to win games scoring double digits, and can that's they, what they're doing. But can they win a close game? Is going to because we're going to find out when they play <sighs> Japan because Japan's got their stuff lined up. Now, if Japan gets mm-hmm. through, or even in Mexico, because Taiwan Walker's got some stuff now. Yes. yes. So can we get into this, Kratzy, the day before? Because yesterday was a blowout, but the day before, U.S. very likely could have lost that game. And and the breaking point there, and this is all we would be talking about today, was Daniel Bard in the game with zero control. It ends up with an injury for Jose Altuve, but also for the U.S. giving up the lead. 
that could have cost them the tournament. That was the one time. Like, I give a ton of credit to DeRosa for leaving Wayne right in because there were people calling for that. He didn't have a choice yesterday. He had to get him. He had to leave him in. He didn't have anybody. No, but Michael mm-hmm. could have carried them for four or five innings. He didn't He didn't have to leave him he in if stuck. he really didn't he feel like stuck. he had it. He was stuck. Martin Perez got pulled the other day yeah, after Yeah, because less than Venezuela is handling it differently. We've talked about But this. this is my point is okay, now Daniel Bard's in the game. And Which he, he has shouldn't have been. Zero clue where Which the ball he should going. not have been in the game. Sorry, Kratz. Go ahead, because uh, I'm fired up about this. Go no, I, I'm I'm tailing what you just said. No, he shouldn't have been in the game. And it's way different than, like, yes, I agree with AJ. He had to keep Wayne right in. He had to, like, yes, I get it. Nicholas would have given you four or five. Hope, you know, you can only really count on four. Uh, and then and then you're really taxing your bullpen. So he had to, he had to stick with it. But I don't even know. I would love to know how much – Bart even warmed up like I that whole that whole sequence that how DeRosa handled it and people are going to be like oh you can't you can't bag on a guy he's not out there very much he's not a manager very often like he's in that position and to me that whole situation was handled exactly opposite of how like it was like he was reacting to the situation instead of being proactive so so Kratz here's my thing we're going to talk about Mookie Betts had a meeting with Mark DeRosa right before that game, closed the door, went in and said, hey, guys, this is game seven of the World Series. Let's treat it like game seven. Jones had his, his you know, his talk, and he's like, you know, we got to play with their emotion. Here's my thing. First of all, Lance Lynn could have gone more innings. He was absolutely shoving it up their butts after the first inning. He threw like 50 pitches, four innings. He could have given you at least one more, if not two more innings. We're going to ask him when he comes on today. He could have given you two more innings. Now, DeRosa, Daniel Bard comes in. He had already struggled in this tournament, throwing it over the plate. As soon as he walks the first guy, you have got to have somebody up in the bullpen. This is my problem. He didn't get anybody up. Next guy, base hit. Sure, it was an infield hit. Weak swing. Base hit. Then he hits the guy. After a wild pitch. Still nobody up. The only reason he got somebody up was Altuve was hurt. It gave him time to get somebody up. Then he walks another guy and another wild pitch. The problem was Mark DeRosa wasn't proactive enough Thinking in his head, well, I've got to get Daniel Bart in. Listen, they won the game. I love Mark DeRosa. But he was late to the trigger knowing as soon as this started happening, we've got all these guys because everybody was ready. They were two days rested. He had his whole complement. He had Graveman. He had all these guys. Adam. He had all these guys lined up that he could have pitched, and he didn't have a single guy up. That's my problem. He wasn't proactive enough. And listen, we all know Daniel Bart's history. He got the yips, and he missed time because he couldn't throw over the plate. As soon as he walks the guy on four pitches that aren't close, you've got to have somebody up because you've got to be ready because you can't let this game get away. They're lucky Trey Turner. Heck, Mark DeRosa should name his kid Trey after Trey Turner. <laughs> saved his I don't think he's having any more kids, but if he did, I'll do it for him. But maybe. I'm serious. Like, that was the problem. Like, he wasn't yeah. – because he's handcuffed and because he's told, well, Daniel Barr needs an inning, screw that. Like, USA needs to win the game. And no, Daniel I don't, think, Barr, I don't think that – I don't think that's because he was handcuffed. I think it – just talking about the proactive part, I don't think – if you're not out on the field, you're not seeing things as they happen. You might have them scripted out in your piece of paper, like, oh, like Joe Madden 2016 World Series style. Like, he almost screwed that up for him because he had it scripted out on the paper. You watch. I completely agree. Lance Lynn – at least has one more inning. I, it's one of the questions that I had. You go ahead and ask him, AJ, since you guys are boys. But, like, he at least had one more inning. But because maybe he's like, oh, okay, well, we got to this point in the game. Now I'm going to go to this guy. This is the guy that has to, yes, maybe a little bit. He has to get work in. There's, like, read it. Read the fact that he is not doing anything I guarantee if you go into the Venezuela dugout right, right there, when they brought Lance Lynn out of the game, they were like, oh. DeRosa was the best player for Venezuela in that situation. <laughs> well, Daniel Bard was, actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair. fair. Except fair. for the Altuve thing, which is absolutely horrible. But, I mean. You're saying that he got hit by a pitch? You mean he got hit by a pitch and he's hurt and he's out for a couple months. Yeah. Me, meaning that's horrible. Meaning, like, I feel bad for Jose Altuve. But. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Jonesy, what do you think? I mean, I think that yeah. he just missed the boat here, and he was so like – again, we've talked about this, and everyone talked – and even Smoltz last night on the broadcast, like, we don't know how many times 
you know, Mark DeRosa has been handcuffed by being told who to pitch and who not to pitch. Well, if you're told before the game by one of your best players to treat it like game seven, there's no egos here, then you pitch. And you saw it from Venezuela when they took Martin Perez out in the first inning, and they're like, we got to shut this down now, and they did yeah. it. Also, if the Rockies call and they're like, leave Bard in no matter what, I'd be like, you guys suck. I don't care. And I'd hang up. <laughs> like, I'm but, not worried about the Rockies pitching plans right now. So I was talking to Smoltz about it, and he said that that's, that's the biggest crippling thing is that the, the, the Americans, they have such a restriction on things. Like Devin Williams, I guess, in, in, in Arizona, he threw one pitch, and the Brewer said, you can't pitch the next day. Through one pitch. Now, get, I get no back-to-backs. I understand that. It's spring training. You build up. It's, uh, it's the 20th. Back-to-backs happen. Playing nine innings happen at this point. So, like I said, you got two more. You got one more game. You mean to tell me that everybody ain't all hands on deck? You know, and again, Bard, I hope, I mean, I, I hope he's good because that was, that. I mean, he threw, he just looked like he was trying to throw it back to Colorado. Uh, like it, it, it wasn't pretty, and I, I hope he's good up there because obviously he's the, the closer of the team and uh, with a two-year deal. So, you know, want to make sure he's good. But there's you can't get guys you can't get guys hot because if they get hot and they don't come in, like it, it. I don't know, man. That's why. That's why. That's the best thing. Being a manager is a tough job, and managing a bullpen has to be one of the toughest jobs of all time because, you know, if you get a guy hot, especially in this kind of tournament, and he's hot for an whole inning and you have to use them you can't sit them down and then get them back on just a regular season you do it and then you know he's done the next day but we were just like as it, it's again i'm just a fan now i'm just like damn come on bard like derosa like is there somebody like you got to get him out this situation get him out as, if, as soon as you can because again the game got out of hand they took over the lead they brought in adam they took over the lead but adam comes in in a bases loaded situation facing salvador perez like that's an that's not a win-win situation at all so um you could have had somebody up earlier again, but Lynn, because the pitch clock went up, the pitch count went up, and Lynn's a horse. I mean, he, you just mean to tell me he couldn't throw another 15, 20 pitches? You know what I mean? But again, I'm glad I ain't got to make those decisions. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, you read the room, right? You said it. Yeah. You read the room. Les Lynn was shoving, shoving. at that point. Yep. Absolutely shoving it. They had no chance. Four innings. I guarantee you if he was at White Sox camp right now, he'd be at least at five innings probably by now because he went four innings last time. So the next time you go back up to five. So his pitch count was manageable. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think he threw fifty pitches maybe in four innings, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. But he's the the pitch count went up to eighty five. So you know, like what? And then okay, you bring in Daniel Bard. Great, great story. If you don't know Daniel Bard's story, go out back and read. He's a huge prospect. Got the yips, missed some time. And he's come back. He's been awesome for the Rockies. So listen, I, I want nothing but the best for Daniel Bard. He's just in a bad spot. And then DeRosa let it get to a point where you got to shut this down, right? And that's that is like what you said, Adam. Like, you got to shut it down. You got to have something. And then you bring Adam in with the base load. He gives up the hit to Perez. Acuna gives yeah. him another the lead with the sack fly, right? He got out of it. He actually did a pretty good job. And then the rest of the guys came in. Bednar gave up the home run to a rise. Fine. But then Presley and the rest of the guys came in and shut it down after the Trey Turner home run. So, I mean, the way, the way DeRosa is handling this, I think, is good. I just think that got – I don't, again, we don't know because we're not on the inside. But for me, that got out of hand too quickly, and he wasn't prepared for it. 58 pitches, by the way. So he could have given you probably at least another, if not at 20. Least another inning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think the cutoff was, was 80. But, yeah, that's at least one more, yeah. one more inning. And then you and, have somebody backing him to get him out of the inning. Yes. And my thing is, like, where's the line? I'm, I'm on Twitter way more these days because I can say what I want. And people are all going, like, when is Bard going to be taken out? You you perfectly memorized the entire sequence, which was amazing. Walk, single, hit by pitch, wild pitch, walk, wild pitch, walk. Like, there's got to be a breaking point before The, the that. breaking point was the walk for me. <laughs> the first walk. As soon as he walked the guy, you got to get someone up because it's game yeah. seven. There's no, like, oh, let's see if we can get out of this for, you know, we're up three runs. Like, no. Like, we're up three runs. Let's not give him a chance to get the tying run to the plate. Then the infield hit with Jimenez, our guy, Andres Jimenez, literally check swung and – backspun it over the pitcher's head for a knock, right? Mm-hmm. And then he wild pitches when he threw it, like, off the, the – where there used to be the uh, aquarium at Marlins Park there. He threw it, like, that far outside. <laughs> then he hits Altuve, breaks his thumb. And there was still – there was nobody up. Yeah. I was, I was sitting at the game, and I could see the visiting bullpen perfectly. And I kept saying to my son, who was sitting next to me, I'm like, they got to get somebody up. Why is there nobody up? How come there's nobody up? And then – 
when Altuve, they had to, the trainer come out. That was when finally somebody jumped up, but it was too late. Then he walked, wild pitch walk, right? And then we're like, oh, we're in it now. And then Salvador Perez, boom, double. And they, he got, Adam got out of it, but like yeah. it was, it was happening. That's what happened. Like managers, new managers say it happens so fast. You're not ready for it. DeRosa to me, wasn't ready for that moment. For sure. I, I think, yeah, the game, the game got too fast. I think, I think this is like a prime example of what happens when you talk about international baseball back in 2010, when I played against Cuba for the first time that I ever played international baseball. Anytime the game would get going like that, there was no mound visit restrictions. There, their catcher would stroll out to the mound and slow the game down. Sometimes it wasn't even to warm anybody up. It was just like, hey, this momentum. But there was just a, there was just, it was a cavalcade. It was just an absolute cascade of freaking momentum for Venezuela. And they're lucky that they were able to bring the guys in out of the pen and you know, squash it to where they did. But, man, that was, yeah, just not it. Venezuela did it in the first <laughs> inning. Martin Perez, big league. He was in the All-Star game last year at under yep. three RA. He didn't make it out of the first. Their manager was like, he see gone. ya, let's bring in somebody. That's my problem with this tournament right now is it's it's too much of a storyline. And it's fine. USA is probably just going to slug their way to a championship anyway. Well, we'll see what happens in the last game. But there's too much talk of what the what you're allowed to do and not do, and we got to be careful with the guys. And only all us. That. Only us. I'm saying only you're only, USA. only the USA. Venezuela doesn't care. So so either. I mean, Dominican Republic ain't care. Yeah, and the no. thing Japan is, they've been practicing for two months for this thing. Their guys back to back. They don't care. I would. Otani just said that he has a leash. He said he yeah, said. Yeah, Otani. He said Otani. they'd give him no leash. Say no what? leash. Yeah. Nothing. Also, Nothing. Otani doesn't give a shit. But, Even but if they pe- said to him, you have a leash, he would say, I don't care. Do you know who I am? I'm the face of the sport internationally right now. I'm going to do what Whoa. I want. I know my body better than you. He said that to the Angels. Remember but, the Angels? What, what, what does USA have? USA has too much bullshit to deal with, and they should just not listen. They need. They can't not listen, though. But that's what. DeRosa. Jonesy, the, did Jim Jones- Leland not do that? He said, I'll Jim listen Leland, to you a little bit. But for the mm-hmm. most part, I don't give a shit. I've been in this game for a long time. I'm going to manage the way I want to manage. I won't leave your starter in for 120 pitches, but I am not worried about getting enough work for each of your relievers. Like, they're here to win, and they'll figure it out, and they can throw side sessions to get ready. I mean, but Leland was on it. That was his last leg. You know I mean? DeRosa, hopefully one day, is a manager. So this is definitely a, a, a testing block. He's getting tested on the major, the biggest stage. Jim, Jim Leland, like, Jonesy, Jim Leland or Mark DeRosa, who, who do you think – is going to listen more to what people tell him. I mean, DeRosa. Mark DeRosa is going to do whatever they say. He listen. wants to be a manager. Leland's like, screw y'all. I've already done it all. I'm out. So we need take screw my, it managers for like Team this. USA. I was yeah, say, be like, oh, we're the heater. <laughs> yeah, like he didn't care. No, but that's what you need then. You need, and this I is. Agree. I agree. They, du- they wanted Dusty Baker is what I was, I've heard. Maybe Jonesy's heard yeah. But Dusty decided yeah, to come I've back heard for Dusty one Baker. more year. Mm-hmm. It, but he came back one more year. So then they were like, well, who can we find? And DeRosa, listen, I, again, I love Mark DeRosa. DeRosa is stud. I'm I just agree. saying it's not about it's not about that. It's where are you in life is the problem. Because if you are deep in the game and you're going to manage and you're going to get shit from people that you're going to need to help you later on, it's different. If you're in, I always call it fuck it mode, fuck it attitude, then it's different. Then you just say, hey, I'm going to manage the way I want to manage because I don't care. So to me, that's the formula for Team USA in order to win. Either that or just out slug everybody, which they've been doing. Yeah. Right. That works too, and they might win anyway, so it's fine. It's just that we were very close to seeing the US get taken down on Saturday. We or all Scotty. Know or or Scotty, how about how about less less like game situations for D Row? What you just said about D Row, he's gonna go in, let's say he goes in in two years and he's interviewing for the Pirates job. And yeah. you think they're going to sit there and be like, oh, what's your game situation? No, they're going to go back to the fact that he overused the pitcher in the, in the WBC two years ago, and he wasn't able to listen to authority. Because that's what teams are looking for in, in managers that haven't managed. Like, guys aren't doing the route that, that Booney took to get to the Yankees. Like, that's a rare case. Like, they're looking, hey, are you able to listen to our analytic department when we tell you that X, Y, and Z? And if he doesn't listen to these, whatever the restrictions are, because we're not privy to what the restrictions are, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't pass that test, 
Nobody's hiring them. True. True. Very I agree. True. That's the problem. That's why we need Jim Leland to be like, I'm going to carry on yeah. win a gold medal. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think the U.S. knows that, too. I think the U.S., like, behind the scenes, like Tony Regan's and, and that group that puts the U.S. roster and the coaching staff together probably knows that. And they yeah. probably are being reminded of that right now is that you have to deal with all the teams, which is fair. The teams have the right to pick up the phone and say, hey, this is how I want my guy to be sure. taken care of. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of money into it. But also, on the other side, you can have a manager that says, psh, psh, you're breaking up. What? What did you say? <laughs> Williams back-to-back -back days if we're in the quarterfinals? All right, cool. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Bye. No, but here's but but uh, sorry, Jonesy. But here's here's my thing: is the players want to play, the pitchers want to pitch. I promise you, if you ask Devin Williams, he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm good to go today." You ask Lance Lynn, he's like, "I'll give you a hundred, right? Like I'll give you a hundo and in six innings to save everybody else." Like mm -hmm. the players want to play. It's not the players. It's the whatever is calling the shot. Tony Regan's, Mark DeRosa, whoever it is. Those are the people putting the. But the other teams, I don't see it. We've talked about this. I don't see the other teams. And maybe they do, but they also might be like, whatever they'd say, strikeout, punchy, screw that. I'm going out there to win the game. Like, you think the Rangers were happy that Martin Perez only threw a third of an inning? Not at all. No. But no. also, like, do you want to leave him in the game when he, when he can't They were trying it? to win the game. Yeah. Also, yeah. Like, am I wrong here that he can't just right after that? He can't. Go, go throw on the side. It's not the oh, end yeah. of the world. It's one freaking start in a big yeah. ass game. You don't have it. You don't have it. It's not like they're they're not actual robots. They need to relax. But the thing is, it's just it's the stupid ass uh, media narrative of it's exhibition. It's exhibition. Hey, the season started in in, in what ten days? These guys are at their own camp. Scherzer just threw seven. Why can't he get Team USA four? You just do seven. And you, well, we had Max on last week, Jonesy, and he said that he's it's a different seven. It's not a ramped True. up seven for him True. personally, which that's fine if he feels that way. And he, he basically said if it was midseason, he would pitch. But he said because it's the beginning of the year, he just doesn't feel like that's the setup for him. So, okay, fine. And there, there has been. He, there, go ahead. He's still throwing 93, 95. Yeah. Start. Where Dylan Cease? Where, I mean, where's Burns? Where's Woodruff? Like I, I think I get the, yeah. I, I get the, that that you know there's just just too much narrative of a restriction. So then everybody with the U.S. Oh, he's throwing too much. He pitched too much. Just give him a day off. He should be playing again. It's still spring training. Guys need their reps. This is a tournament. You gotta win it. You do hey. what you like to, tomorrow. You do it all hands on deck. Last game. Jonesy, you gotta Jonesy, you're gonna you, win. You've been to these games. You played in these games. You won the damn gold medal. I was at my first ever World Baseball Classic game on Saturday night. It ain't a damn exhibition. When you're it's in the not. stands, I promise you, it ain't no damn exhibition. They can call it an exhibition all they want. If you sit in them stands and you got, you know, I was in the middle of, like, as Kratz made fun of me on Twitter for where I was sitting, but I was in the <laughs> middle of it, man. Parking it was lot. awesome. Dude, yes. it, was inc it was awesome. Like, I mean, I was surrounded by people with Venezuela. I had a guy in front of me with a Budweiser cowboy hat on in a USA. If I posted it when he was dancing when they were Saw playing that. party in the USA. And then the guy, the, the whole row behind me was all Venezuelans and their flags and, you know, doing the whatever they do. Yeah. Like, dude, this ain't no damn exhibition. This stuff matters. No. Like, these people care, man. And the players care. So let's quit calling this an exhibition and call it what it is. This is like, let's go time. An hour after the game, Puerto Rico, Mexico, an hour, they were still on the concourse partying. Mexican, Puerto Rican fans partying. It's, again, win-loss. They wanted to, Everybody wants their team to win. It's bigger than that for this tournament. It's a cultural experience. It's how often does Venezuela, how often does Cuba, I mean, what, since 1999 was the last time Cuba was on U.S. soil as a national team? Like, that's a story. That, like, these, these there's so many impressive things that comes from this. And like I said, I, I said it last time, I'm playing in front of, I'm playing in Baltimore. I got, there's 2 million fans. Okay, that's great. Go to New York, there's 14 million fans. This tournament, I'm playing for 330 million. That's a little bit different. I got Yankee fans rooting me on. Again, I'm going to get cut out, cussed out and caught all names when I go on the road during the season. I get that. But for that time, during that time, even after the, the tournament, fans and other Paul Bars like, hey, man, love what you guys did with Team USA. Good job, man. Kiss my ass because you're on the same team. But they respected the fact that I represented the nation. You know, even though they have their own individual fan bases, that's what this term is about. It's not just win losses, man. It's bringing these cultures together. And I had so many rapists. The last couple of days, <laughs> uh, <laughs> half the half of Japan was watching their games too. 
They said it's like Super Bowl ish yeah. numbers. Sixty one percent Japan watching a game 61% in Puerto Rico. Sixty one percent Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Hey, this is awesome. I, yeah. I don't know how. Listen, if you like baseball a little bit and you never watched a baseball game, if you turn these games on and you're not entertained by like, I mean, because pretty much every game has been other than the game last night. It was just a, an ass whooping. But other than that, every dude, I, every game has been something has happened where it catches your attention. The games have been close. They've been competitive. The fans are in it till I mean, last night even it was fourteen to two in Cuba in the ninth inning. Their fans are still doing their all their stuff right. Like this is what it, baseball is mm-hmm. is about. And I know on the major league level it'll never get to this because there's too many games and all that. But like if we could just get a little bit of this energy. Well, you're not going to get it for a little a bit. I'm not, game on a little bit on yeah. August 10th when they're just a little bit. games out. Just a, I, I understand that, but I'm saying if we could just get a little bit of it, like just a drop of it. Well, if the places were packed and the fans were into it on a daily basis, why can't the like fans that, be into it? Yankees, Red Sox is nuts. Dodgers, Giants gets nuts. Yeah, yeah. but but it's, it's not, not like we don't I'm have not, any passion. It's just no. that we have a lot of weight. We have a lot of shitty teams. And then fans don't fill up the park because they're non-competitive teams. That yeah. hurts the game. If, if there was more parity in the game and team, teams tried, like the Pirates, that place is gorgeous. It would be awesome. Ooh. It would be a vibe. Miami, you, we've all seen that. And I, I called a lot of the games in Miami last World Baseball Classic, and I'd gone to many empty ballpark games in, in Miami living down there. And I was like, this is how this place could be. Even half of this would be awesome. The only other mm-hmm. time it was like that, Jose Fernandez starts. Sometimes you would go and it would get nuts. You would have, there's tons of Cuban Americans down there that would show up. Fernandez was a top three pitcher in baseball and it would get a little nuts there. And you were like, this is awesome. Otherwise, empty. So it is possible. You need competitive superstars on teams. Yan- Yankee Stadium gets nuts. You know that. The old Yankee Stadium was better. I agree. Old Yankee Stadium. I agree. But Mets games, Yankee games during the regular season. Red Sox games, they get nuts. Even Cubs games when they suck sometimes are fun and they're a vibe, right? And it's yeah, past it's Friday afternoon at Wrigley. So it's not like we don't have it. No, no, but it not not at this level for nine solid innings like what these games have been. But this is postseason baseball. Philly it's last better, year. For me, this is better than postseason baseball. I know, Again, but F- because Philly last sides. year was nuts. So Listen, Philly was nuts. I was in San Diego last year. That place was crazy. L.A. is always – I mean, all the – listen, you get to postseason, it is like that. For Trey Turner, right? Trey Turner said, that's the loudest stadium I've ever been a part of. Adam Wainwright's pitched in every moment possible. That's the loudest, most electric stadium I've ever been a part of. These guys have done it all, and they're telling you that this is a different feeling. Randy Rosarena from Mexico hit home runs, set the, the postseason home run record, makes that catch the other day, and what does he say? Best moment. Best moment ever. Best moment. Better than hitting home runs in the World Series. So that tells you the players are into this. This is an exhibition. This is this is what they want. And I know, again, it's hard to replicate for 162 games. But if we can just take a little drop of this and put it into regular season games, I'm for it. I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, but what – okay, you're you're calling that out. What do you specifically want to do to create that? My I, I idea don't know. That's is, not my job. My idea is more competitive baseball well, of teams. Course. Yeah, of, of course. That, no, that's of part course. of it. Who's, who's been who's been competitive the last few years and still gets no fans? It's a great que- it's a great rhetorical question that no one's going to answer because you nailed it, Kratzy. If you're yeah. good, they'll show up and it'll be a I mean, vibe. Tampa, no one wants to watch Tampa, shitty baseball. Tampa, okay. they don't show up. But all I'm going to say about place. that is the teams. Yes, there's teams that have history, and the small markets complain about, oh, it's the big markets. You know, they have more of a market. They have you know, it's not fair. No, it's how you treat your fan base. Pittsburgh, you said it. They're going to come out. If you sell your team, if you treat fans like, like whatever happened to like, hey, fans are the customer. Treat them like the customer, like the customer is right. I'm not saying that the Pirates need to go and get Shohei Otani next year and Pirate fans will come out. No, I'm saying give a damn, like care about what is going on and the team you're putting out there. Don't ever give any glimpse of the fact that you care about the bottom line because that's what's getting in the way. You haven't once talked about the quality of baseball in this entire, AJ's entire rant, Jonesy's entire rant, the players. This is what this show's about, is about the players and MLB is about the players. 
sell the players. That's how we get a little bit of this for 162 games. They don't want to sell the players. They want to hit their bottom line and the good teams, well, you know, we're just going to be the good teams and we can't really do anything about the bad teams. Like, sell the players. Otani went from 1.7 million followers on Instagram during this tournament to three over 3 million followers in one, what a, I think it was March, so 19 days. It was since March 1st. Like, this sells the players. MLB needs to sell the players. They don't ever call they don't ever call the Olympics for basketball an exhibition, the dream team exhibition games. Mm-mm. No. This is the best players and shame on the teams for not selling the players, shame on the media for calling this an exhibition because this is all about the players and you see what the players are like. I will back up I'm very well stated. I will back up the media. Most of the media does not call it an exhibition, though, Kratzy. There's okay. just the shitty There's the shitty takes on, on social media, which are mostly from people that don't watch games. And you can go on and look, and Jonesy called a few of them out, too, yeah. where it's just garbage, garbage takes from people that are just trying to, like, raise their hand and say, hey, notice me. I will say most of the media that covers baseball on a daily basis keeps pushing the narrative to, to everyone, saying, hey, this shit is awesome. Yep. You should be watching this. This these guys are playing for their country. They're playing for everything. Everything's on the line for them. So I think Mar- it's huge. I'm around Morosi and Rosenthal down here, and they are like they're past. They got more. They got more energy than just a, again Rosenthal sitting down there selling his bean pies and his and his uh, bow tie <laughs> on a Saturday with Fox. Again, he's going to report that. He he's showing more passion when he's reporting. Morosi obviously is a passionate dude. But showing more passion, and that's because the energy in these ballparks, like you said, AJ, the energy from from the from the lineups being called when they when they when they were showing Team Venezuela on the on the screen, like people are like, they, let's go! Fans are in every single pitch. You only get that opening day, and it's again, it's only one sided. Aaron Judge is gonna get a huge ovation. That's it. You know what I mean? And then the rest of the season, you better put up or shut up. Here, it's completely different, man. I, and the best part, though, for me. Ken Griffey Jr. got the biggest ovation out of everybody. That's uh, awesome. That was, and then Miguel Cabrera topped that because the whole state was Venezuela. And <laughs> I wish he got, I wish he got to play. I wish he got one more at bat. I mean, just for his for his legacy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I seen. I a thought situation. they should have put him in. I thought they should have put him in the last inning to get him at bat. To hit for I, he had I thought he should have started. Labor. Yeah, I thought he should have gotten in at bat. That's I thought he should have started. He, he yeah. should have. They should have found a way to at least get him. Jonesy. So on Saturday and Crouch, you can speak to this too. We're talking about people calling this an exhibition. You don't think that when Kahada struck out Tucker on a questionable strike call mm-hmm. and he gave him the suck it to the USA <laughs> dugout, you don't think them boys were pissed? You don't think yes. when he hit JT Real Muto and he looked walked to first and gave him the death stare and, a, and a Kahada shut up mm-hmm. real quick. Real Muto was walking to first and he's like, bitch, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? And then he got taken out of the game and he wasn't doing all this shit when nope. they're – and the next, when Trey Turner hit the home run, he shut up real quick, right? That's the pet. Pissed them, he pissed them boys off, right? So don't tell me this is an exhibition because those dudes care. If you're doing this again, if you're doing it May 25th, he, again, Kiata's not going to show as much as much of that. But yeah, he go to first base. He takes. I mean, Rimuto gets hit, takes it, and goes to first base. Not in this instance. No, you're gonna sit there. You want you you want people to get on. The, you want both sides actually to come to the front line. We're not gonna fight in this exhibition, but you want that. You want that energy. And again, Kihada's not trying to uh, uh, show up Team USA, show up the players. He's showing his energy and passion for what's across his chest. That's what people are trying. To, oh, he, he, he's trying to call him out and bait him. Nah, that's just all passion. And and Rio Muto with Team USA across his chest is like, nah, you. It's not Philly versus whatever. Nah, this my got my guys right here. We about to tear y'all asses up. And ooh, that lit a fire. And that was a terrible call. Oh, that was a high strike on. That was a high strike. <laughs> you got you. Yeah, that's a high strike. That was real bad. Yeah, they had a they had a bad moment. There's one. There's another uh, debate to settle here because we will have Alec Thomas on soon. To sweet Caroline or to not sweet Caroline? Dude, yes. In Miami, oh. AJ says yes. Jonesy says no. Wow. I've got a take here, but you guys start because you were actually Jonesy. At the I know you don't like this because you're an Oreo guy, but listen to me. I was, you're, and you know, plus you're up in the high, the nose, the high, you know, the snooty area. You know, I was down there with the people. They were all singing it. Venezuela, America, guys with Dominican hats, Puerto Rico hats. They were all oh, touching me. They were all doing it. So I don't want to hear. Don't play it. 
because they did it, and the fans absolutely love it. This is the worst tweet of all time. It's going to go down because <laughs> we're in Miami. Turn the bleep up. Listen to me. Man. Dude, the people were into this. The oh, people were wait. loving it. Let me uh, read it for the podcast crowd. That's fifth inning. That fifth inning song of Sweet Caroline didn't amp up anyone. It was quite brutal. Parentheses, I respect the song, but not for this event. Hope they don't think that reps USA when it comes to music. We're in Miami. Turn the bleep up from simply exactly. AJ 10. Bro, you got Rick Ross. Again, <laughs> we can we can go milder. You got Flo Rida. You can go you can go, I mean, you can go even milder. There's so many guys. This Sweet Caroline is Boston only. And again, I played against him so much, so I can't stand that damn song. But like, that's like, I mean, they should have just brought down uh, New York, New York. No, just, Dude, Sweet Carolina is iconic. Uh, Anywhere you go, it's a okay. So song. here's another question for you. Since Not you in want, Miami. you want, you want this, right? So here's a question for you, and uh, Kratz, I don't know. You probably don't notice this on the broadcast. I didn't know this. The announcer, the PA announcer, when he announces the names and like he says, now batting Trey Turner, shortstop. When Venezuela hit, he would say. Now batting, shortstop, I don't know how to say it in Spanish, Jump but he would say it in English and Spanish, right? So, like, when Japan comes up to hit, is he going to say Shohei Otani designated hitter? Does he say it in Japanese? Yes. Okay, yeah. then why can't we play Sweet Caroline? I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in you Miami, man. I want us some DJ Khaled. Even, even in that, like, turn, turn turn it it? It's a party. Again, that's a great, respectable song. It's a historical song. I just was like. Oh man, that's just because you don't like the song. Because like because every time I play played it, they would mean they were beating our asses. Yeah. But, <laughs> I rather I wanted to have a Bud Heavy when I heard that song. That's how I did. <laughs> I'm just that's telling how you, man. He's got PTSD because hey, he listen. played for the Orioles and, uh, and the, in Boston. Listen, in the people, that's their damn song. As, so I, as I told Kratz, as I told Kratz, I'm a man of the people. I was sitting with the people. I went up in the suite with Jonesy, you know, talking to the commissioner, talking to Tony Clark, trying to solve labor problems. <laughs> I was sitting with the people, and the people were jamming to Sweet Caroline. Now, they played Latino music the whole rest of the game. Yeah. And it was – you know, my, so honestly, I'm sitting there I'm sitting there with my wife and my son, and my wife looks at me in about the third inning, and she goes, you know what the best part of this game is? The music. She's like, the music is awesome. The people know every word. They're mm-hmm. singing every song. Like, you want to know how we get people to come to the game? Make an entertainment experience. Make, play good music. Make people excited. Make people, you know, you know, Sweet Caroline, you don't like it, so what? Don't sing it. But the forty-seven other thousand people are singing it. I agree with you. That you, I agree with you. Song stinks, but I, I agree with you. <laughs> Jonesy, Rassi, what do you think? Jonesy, Jonesy was, yeah. I wish I would have heard it. I love the, I love the back and forth. But Jonesy was up in the suite. He had the door shut. He could, he just like reached his ear out <laughs> while he was finishing his sushi with, with Tony Clark and Alan. Latin food. Oh, Latin food. Oh, okay. So when in when in Rome, you were getting some authentic, <laughs> authentic Lone Depot section park Latin food. <laughs> yeah. See, he's getting sushi, Crouchy. I had to order the the picho burger or the picho hot dog that had like pineapples and like fried. Food. I don't know. It was good though. I don't know what really? was on it, but it was good. Yeah. I don't know. It was a different kind of hot dog, but it was good. I like it. I like it. I, I, I guess I was on Jonesy's side initially, but you've kind of convinced me because the thing I'm thinking about is they're, they're playing Latin vibes and music most of the time, especially if the songs are in Spanish. I mean, most U.S. fans don't speak Spanish, so they don't even no, know the words. No, but there were songs that people... I know they were was, dancing was, and all was, that. It was, but I'm saying was, like they probably were like, let me throw in a, you know, a real American song yeah. and get the crowd going there. Plus, I don't know, like the music is a cool way to unite both crowds. Exactly. It's not like they Did played you see- Lee Greenwood proud to be an American and like only have, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Like, yes. I mean, it's Sweet Caroline. It's a baseball song now. They they played the Hulk Hogan song, I'm a Real American, before taking yes. the field yesterday. Mm. Oh, when they're taking the field. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool though, too. Yeah. I, mean, I love that. Cool. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Trout taking the field, too. I get it. I get it. We're in Miami, man. Uh, we're, we're not in Kansas City. <laughs> we're in Miami. <laughs> Play some Daddy hey. Yankee. <laughs> we we have someone playing in Miami tonight. Music's going to be nuts, and so is the game. Alec Thomas from Team Mexico joining us right now from Miami. We appreciate the time, Alec. We're so excited for tonight's game. You tell us, uh, what, what are you trying to listen to at the ballpark? What gets you fired up? <laughs> uh, you know what? I've been listening to a lot of uh, Mexican banda music, and uh, you know what? I'm kind of tired of it. But uh, I, I, I think I'd rather listen to to some rap or something like that. But 
you know, we've been winning, so I'm not going to complain about it too much. But every time I go into the clubhouse, I'm like, bro, what is this? Like, can we, can we, we listen to the same three songs every day. And, uh, you know, that's just the, that's just the vibe we got going on right now. Just don't change it up. So I guess I'm just out to wear it. So, so. Bro, your manager's Benji Gill. Yeah. Uh, he's he's Mexican uh, right now. Mexican. He, he, he real American Mexican. Right <laughs> <laughs> is there a fake Mexican? I'm confused. No. He's a real no. Mexican. I grew up with him and his nephews. They they playing all that keep the Saturday kind of side of cookouts and all that kind of stuff. They bringing it to the ballpark. Yep, for sure. So so Alex uh, or Alex, sorry. Uh, for people that don't know, you play for the Diamondbacks. Obviously, you 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 now are with Mexico in the WBC. You had a great rookie year. But people like I don't know if Scott knows this, Kratz or Jonesy know this. But I've known Alex since he was like, I mean, like two years old. Mm-hmm. So like he used to be, and I, and I, I he'll, he'll probably get mad at me for telling the story, but like he used to be that annoying ass kid that was in the clubhouse. <laughs> and I'm all for kids being in the clubhouse. But like we're trying to work out, and his dad was our strength coach forever with the White Sox, right? So Alec would be in there, and he'd be bouncing off the Bozu balls, like doing like cartwheels. And we'd be trying to work out. And we'd be like, who is this annoying ass kid that's running around? We can't get our workout in. And then his dad, <laughs> Alan, who was a strength coach now for MLB, would be like, that boy's going to make it. You watch. And we're like, well, you know, we'd like Canerico and Burley. And I'd be like, damn, I hope he makes it because he's annoying the shit out of us. <laughs> and then here he is. Now we're interviewing him on TV. He so made it. Your dad was right. So uh, tell, us about, yeah. tell us about like growing up in a big league clubhouse, being around. I mean, you were there every single day, which is awesome. And there's a way I'd like to grow up. Yeah, no, it was awesome, man. I'm definitely, you know, blessed to have a dad uh, in the game. And, uh, you know, I got to see, you know, greats like, like yourself, AJ. And, and uh, you know, it was it was awesome just growing up in that environment and uh, messing around and, you know, knowing you guys. Um, but, no, I enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, I'm really glad that uh, I had that uh, opportunity to, to see everyone and, you know, learn how to act and not have to, like, learn how to not act. And, uh, you know, it just took, took everything, uh, took everything in and, um, try to apply that to my game. So, um, you know, I'm really blessed that I had to have opportunity to, to be in that clubhouse. Um, Alec, uh, you got called up this year or you got called last year, year before, well, you're new to the big league, you're still young. Um, but obviously getting to the big leagues is one of the best and most exciting things that can happen. I'm very, that that's the dream come true. Energy. Because we obviously that's the biggest thing right now. Biggest focal point is the WBC. Energy in when you plan for the Diamondbacks normal game, USA Mexico. Then now you're coming here, Mexico Puerto uh, Mexico Puerto Rico. How is like that, that energy? How is that just just changed? Because Diamondbacks, you ain't getting that energy. I know that firsthand. No, nah, you're not. You're definitely not getting that energy at a normal, uh, you know, Diamondbacks game, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, the energy yes. is unmatched. Uh, right now uh you know when we played puerto rico uh that was crazy we played usa that was crazy you know we're playing in front of you know forty thousand fans um you know personally i've never really done that and uh definitely a cool experience but you know the dimebacks unfortunately we only get like fifteen thousand maybe at the game and uh you see a lot of seats um you know empty but but right now I, i don't see any seats empty and you know it's a great environment to play in and you know i'm enjoying every minute of it Alec, Eric Kretz, do you, uh, who, who, who knows less Spanish on the team than Rowdy? Is there anybody that knows less Spanish than Rowdy Tellez? Uh, probably, probably me or Austin Barnes. Uh, even, even, yeah. even Duran, even Jaren's Oh, up Duran, there? uh, Duran too. I mean, we're all in there, man. We're all at, like in the same boat. We don't, we don't know too much, but we know those key words. And, uh, you know, we can, we can play the part, <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, but yeah, we, we got some guys who don't really speak Spanish and, uh, you know, we bond together over that a little bit, but at the same time, you know, uh, we play around with it a lot and, uh, you know, it's just, it just is what it is, but we're Mexican though. We're, we're still repping. So Wait, Alec, your mom, Marcella, your mom, she didn't teach you Spanish growing up. Uh, I know she, I was she's, told... she's deep Mexican, right? Like, cause she's, you know, your dad, AT used to always be like, man, my wife's so Mexican. And he's like, oh, she's going to teach Alec all the Spanish. Now you don't speak Spanish, man. I'm going to get on your dad. Yeah. That's, that's, I, I think it's more on uh, my mom, uh, that she didn't continue to speak Spanish to me. 
Uh, we lived in North Carolina, and there's really no, you know, Hispanic people there. And uh, so I just, you know, American boy, <laughs> just grew, grew up uh, around, you know, country people. Um, so when I got to Chicago, same thing, city people. I really, you know, Hispanic vibes there. But whenever I lived in Tucson when I was a little kid, uh, I definitely spoke a lot of Spanish there. And uh, it just kind of got away from me. I, didn't, I haven't spoke uh, Spanish that much. So um, I used to have conversations with my great-grandmother is what they used to tell me in, in Spanish when I was, you know, two, three, four years old. So, um, you know, I just got away from it and haven't really spoke. So if you, Take, so, so you guys, I mean, obviously you're trying to win the, you're trying to win the whole thing here. If you guys win the next two games and you guys fly down to Mexico and you're having a parade of those four guys you just mentioned, if you guys get lost, who is helping you find your way out of the back to the team outside of the Mexican parade? Who's who, who do you, who do you put all your faith and trust in, in their Mexican heritage and their Spanish speaking? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, we're going to combine everybody together. We're going to figure that stuff out. We're going <laughs> to, I don't know. I would, I would say Rowdy just because he's huge and, you know, he's pretty intimidating and I feel like he gets some answers for some people. Um, He'll get you some food. Yeah, I'll get us some food. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But definitely, I'd pull out the Google Translate because I don't think we're finding our way back if if everyone <laughs> speaking Spanish to us. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think we'd be lost for for a while. Not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on food. Um, I was, obviously, I'm here in Miami, and I've been sitting in the suite eating Cuban food every single day. Extremely happy. Um, has, <laughs> how's the food been? In the, how's the food been in the clubhouse? Uh, good. I mean, it's been a lot of the same stuff, like carne asada with ceviche. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just pretty much those two <laughs> things have stuff. been been the main point of our meals. Uh, shrimp, um, some good steak with chimichurri sauce. Uh, now nah, we've had some good food, man. Uh, we had some. Um, one of our chefs from the Dimebacks actually um, was there with us for a little bit, and he was cooking up some good food, but. A lot of ceviche, man. Just a lot of it. Yeah. Hey, Alec, that. give us give us the scouting report on the clubhouse. So Rowdy was on the other day and was hilarious, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't want to hear anything in in English. I just heard tequila after winning the game against Team USA, and everyone was celebrating." So I mean, you've got Rowdy in there, you've got Rosarena in there. Who's the funniest? What's the funniest thing you've heard so far from any of them? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't think Randy really has to talk in order to be funny. So I'm going to go ahead and say Randy. Uh, he, uh, he can do whatever he wants to. And um, he doesn't have to talk and he'll just be funny. I, I don't know. But Barnes is definitely someone who uh, is, is very funny in his own way. Uh, just the way he goes about his stuff is hilarious. And then, uh, who, I mean, Rowdy, I mean... He's just a character, man. He's he could have his own, you know, little TV show, little uh, people that follow him around. Um, but no, we have a, a good group of guys, man, and they keep it light and keep it fun, and, and you know that's what it's all about, really, just having that bond um, with everyone and being comfortable. And uh, that's definitely what we are right now. And I think we'll definitely have uh, some brothers after this for sure. Hey Alec, uh, are you gonna are you gonna start uh, shagging in cowboy boots like Randy or Rosarena when you get back to the Diamondbacks? <laughs> <laughs> if it if it brings and you know if it makes me hit like him, yeah, I'll definitely do it for sure. So, but no, that's so, a look though. Yeah, for sure. So, di speaking of the Diamondbacks, uh, you know, you guys are poised to have a bigger year this year. They just signed Corbin Carroll right to a huge contract extension. What are the Diamondbacks' outlook for this year? How excited are you with the young core? And has there been any extension talks? Have you, I mean, have they talked to you? Have they approached you? I'm sure you want to stay there. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I definitely want to stay there. I mean, I just got a house there, so I'm, I'm definitely trying to stay in that area. <laughs> but uh, no, no extension talks, um, nothing like that. But we have a great uh, young core, and uh, we came up together, and uh, I really like our team, and, you know, we can all, I feel like, go out to eat together and and, and have a great time and, and have that bond. So, um, you know, we're comfortable around each other. And uh, I think we're definitely going to surprise a lot of people. 
and uh, you know we're fast and we play a different brand of baseball um, than most teams. So uh, it's going to be special, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the season. I think the shift's going to help y'all out. Just the elimination, y'all got way too much speed. Uh, so y'all just put the ball in play. Y'all y'all get all hits all day. But I want to talk about tonight's game. Obviously, you're going against the powerhouse of Japan. It is what it is. Um, approach to facing Sasaki. Uh, scouting reports that you guys have have you guys received because obviously there's not a, that's not that much information on them besides Otani, Darvish. That's pretty much it. Uh, and a little bit on Yoshida. So what's you guys uh, scouting report? I know all those guys, so I just want you to ask me. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, the dude throws, you know, 102 and with the 90, 92 mile an hour splitter. So, um, you know, everything's going to be hard. So for me, it's just, you know, hit the ball to left center. Um, so that's that's really my, my approach right now. And uh, that's normally my approach to uh, left center field um, inside half the ball. But, um Definitely, uh, it's going to be a challenge today, and uh, we got a meeting here in about an hour, and we're going to go watch some video on them and, and see, you know, what it looks like and everything, but um, definitely uh, def- definitely going to be a, a tough task today, but, um, you know, I feel like Japan hasn't really played in, uh, um, you know, that, you know, heated, you know, game yet. They haven't played uh, anybody like us, I feel like, so. Um, you know, it's going to be a test for them. And I feel like we've been in those, those situations where, you know, our back's against the wall and we're down a few runs. So um, I feel like we're, we're, we're made for this moment right now. And uh, I feel like it's going to be a great game. Alec, you're not going to ask Jonesy. He was giving you the layup there for the scattering report. You know, he homered <laughs> off Sasaki in Japan. <laughs> oh, really? I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> I bust all the no, asses. I don't care who they so are. We, we I don't got What you got uh, for me? Uh, it's basically the same the thing. Head out. Uh, tell Team USA, of course, you got to get the head out. But Team Japan does not beat themselves. Right. You have to beat them. You have to take the extra base. You guys got speed. You guys have to do every single thing like that because they're really good at limiting things. So if you got a chance to go for a double, go for it. A chance for a triple, take the extra bases. You have to do that. If you play station to station, they, they'll, they'll stop all that. So you're going to have to. And, and your pitching staff has to attack them. Because they have good eyes, they'll walk. They, it, you have to be dynamic against them. Same thing I told Team USA against uh, Venezuela is if the more dynamic you are, you limit their opportunities. And they're fundamentally sound like hell, but you can rattle them by moving around too much with y'all speed. You can definitely get in their brains, and once you do that, they'll make an error. They'll make a mistake. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but Jones, he had you homer off him. Tell him. Oh, well, I mean, he's chicken shit. He wants to throw me a slider, fork, didn't slider. And then I was like, you got to throw me a fastball. And he threw me a one-two meter. I launched that damn thing. Uh, He never threw me another fastball. Um, Well, that was a strike. I asked the catcher. I said, I'll give you some cigarettes. And if you give me one fastball, (laughs) next one was like up here, up here at my neck. Um, But he's tough. I mean, and and he's, I faced him three, two years ago when he was 20. So he's definitely a little bit more polished and he's tough. He's, he's, he's good for a reason, so he can be beat. You just got to be dynamic and make him uncomfortable. Get him in the stretch. Make him uncomfortable. Run. Like, do be dynamic. Be who you, be the reason why you got to the big leagues. Do that times 10 tonight, and you guys will have a lot more success than people are trying to give you guys credit for. Yep. Who do you feel like, who do you feel like the in your lineup, you're like, okay, man, this guy's up in this situation. He's going to get it done because you guys have constantly been coming back, and I think it's been team comebacks. But who do you think is that guy? Who do you feel like everyone's kind of like, oh, man, if we can get to this spot in the lineup, I know this dude is going to come up clutch for us. Yeah, I feel like uh, I've been on base for a lot of Randy's uh, big hits. So I'm going to go ahead and say Randy uh, for sure. But um, Manessis is another guy who's who's able to do that too. So, um, you know, we got a lot of guys in the lineup who have came up big in big situations. So, um, But just to pinpoint those two, um, definitely have came up big for us. So, um, yeah, Randy has, has been, I've been on base for a, a lot of his stuff and he's, he's done his thing. So, uh, yeah, definitely Randy. Alec, what's your hat? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, waggle. <laughs> it's, it's a cool little duck. I like it. You just, <laughs> like, the hat? <laughs> you just like the hat? Cause I was trying to yeah. figure out what it was. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a golf hat. I mean, I've been trying to golf a little bit. Uh, oh, oh, get a little better. 
Okay. Uh, got my own clubs, but uh, yeah, I, def- I got this uh, just recently, so I've been wearing it a little bit. Got it. So, because uh, I was wondering, you th- I thought you'd come in wearing the sombrero, like the Mexican sombrero <laughs> home run hat. Like, who keeps no. that? Do you keep that? Does someone keep that in their hotel room, or is the equipment guy have it in the dugout? Uh, I think our, our clubhouse manager keeps it around. I think he, he, he handles it. Is that Flacco? Uh, no, it's a uh, Christian. I, I think Flacco might have his own, his own stuff. He might have like the little luchador mask with him. Probably. I guess. <laughs> We're trying to figure out what Flacco does. <laughs> or what oh, his real Flacco's name is. Man. Flacco well, is I, Flacco, man. He, who the heck well, is I, mean, I know he's the man, but. Who is he? So what do you Who's mean, Flacco? who is he? He's, he's, he's a, a, I don't know he's who he is. one of our clubhouse managers. It, for Mexico or for the Diamondbacks? Rowdy Teles told us this the other no, day. No, were you Mexico. on with Rowdy? Yeah, but he didn't say who he like. It's so for, it's for Mexico. But where did he come from? I mean, I know Mexico. Don't say Mexico. <laughs> but does he work for a team? <laughs> I'm seriously, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not sure, Alec, but he's just he's a, he's a concierge, uh, uh, <laughs> life life of the clubhouse, um, a homie. Um, yeah, he's he's all of the above, man. He can be whatever he wants to be, but uh, he definitely just helps out in the clubhouse. Do you know what his name is? His real name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. See? Rowdy said See, the same then that's, thing. Then that's he's the man. Flacco, man. Yeah, he's the that's straight the man. Flacco. Like if, if you just go by a nickname and you're doing stuff, like you're the just like Alex said, you're the man. That guy's the man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's so is man. he like one of the guys, Alec, is he like the guy, because like a lot of the Latin guys have like a guy in every city that like takes him out, or like drives him back and forth from the ballpark, right? So is he like that, but he's in the clubhouse, so he's a little he's a more. clubby. But he's not, though. Yes, he is. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't, he did take us out the other night, I know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, nah, I don't, I haven't seen him necessarily away from the field i saw him yesterday actually uh just hanging out in the lobby uh eating some food watching the game but no i don't really know what he does outside of the field but inside you know the clubhouse and everything you know he's helping out and um doing whatever he can to you know help us out watch the other game have you watched the other wbc games like did you watch the game last night yeah i watched a little bit of it on on tv um but you weren't going? Girl, like I would if I was there, I would have been like, I want to go to the game. <laughs> no. Like, I man, Saturday I, night, I would be like, man, we got Saturday true. off. That's definitely not true, man. You're lying right now. Cause if you caught nine innings of that of a WBC game, I don't think you want to go watch another nine innings sitting <laughs> in that crowd. I don't think so. I don't know if I Yeah, but see the difference true. is I would have I would have been with Jonesy up in the suite because I would have been exactly. a player. Right, so that would have been, they would have been feeding me sushi and stuff. So yeah, different when you're still playing. When you get old and retired, you got to sit out in the crowd. Well, I, I'm barely, I barely got one year of service time, so I can't even get a, a box seat. So I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd be able to, I'd, I'd have to eat a, a hot dog or you know nachos or whatever they got. You know, at Lone Depot Park. <laughs> hey, Alec, you just need more famous friends helping you out, like AJ. And, and Todd Frazier's watching. He said, ask him if I helped him out at all while I played with the White Sox. That's my guy. You got a message for Frazier? Uh, you know, Flavor Frazier is the man. He, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he told me just, you know, to be the same guy if you're, you know, 20 for 40 or you're 0 for, you know, 0 for 40. And just have that swag about you and just, you know, be a dog. And, uh, you know, I really respect him. And, uh, you know, he was, he was you know, a good uh, mentor when he was with the White Sox. And definitely appreciate him. And he's been a good friend. Well, we appreciate you, Alec. Good luck oh, in this on, one. Alec, before what? you go, I got two quick things. One, are two? you mad? No, just they're quick. One, are you mad the White Sox didn't draft you? Because I remember talking to your dad. And he's like, I don't want the damn White Sox to draft my kid. So were you mad about that? Uh, no, I wasn't mad that they didn't draft me, but I was upset that they uh, drafted uh, another outfielder uh, with like the 40 some pick. I'm like, man, I know that dude's not better than me, but, um, you know, why they have to draft an outfielder? They could have drafted anybody else. Look um, him up, Scott. So, so I, I felt who, like who I was it. Who was I, it? 
uh, Steel Walker. Uh, he's oh, you know dude. what? That's funny. I was at that draft. I drafted that dude. So, yeah, I was. I remember you draft? That. Oh, you announced I was the him? guy that announced him. <laughs> but that's funny. Yeah. And then, two, I, this is a message from your dad, A.T., Alan Thomas. He said, man, you tell my damn son, stay inside the damn ball. So, stay inside the damn ball and I get a hit off Suzaki. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Of good shit, Alec. That was fun, man. Good luck tonight. We'll all be watching. Have a great time with Team Mexico. It's hard not to, right? Yep. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Awesome. It's going to be fun tonight. It's I, I gonna think it's awesome. going to be close tonight, too. I've uh, We'll do picks at the end, so we'll save it. Oh, Jonesy's like, I don't know. Uh, I, I have reasoning. I have reasoning. We, we Let's do it now, just because I know we'll go for a while probably with Lance Lynn and we have a moment. You, are you guys ready for for picks right now? And I'll give you the lines, too. First of all, before we go, I just want to say that, that, like I said earlier, that Alec Thomas and I have known each other literally since he was, like, two years old, right? Yeah. And to see him playing now is, like, the, one of the coolest things for me. Because, again, is like, when I was telling that story, like, we'd come out of the weight room and be like, that damn out. He's, like, jumping around, like, like, I just want him out of there, right? And then his dad, Alan Thomas, would be like, man, he's going, that kid's going to make it one day. We're like, yeah, whatever. Not a thought. It's pretty awesome, for, like, for me, knowing him for that long. Like, I mean, in 2005, you have to understand that he was a little kid. Yeah. Like, Alan Thomas's house blew up what? in oh, North Carolina, like, during the season. Like, his house like blew up. Like, there was up. a fire? He, a pilot light in his stove broke. Yeah. And natural gas came out, and then it flicked on, and his house blew up. Wow. Like, I'm talking, like, a log cabin mm. in North Carolina. Like, cars were on the highway, and he's on top of this hill. Blew the windows out of these cars. Holy shit. Like, oh, this was, wow. like, not kidding. And then his dad had cancer. So, like, I mean, I'm, I've known, like, this family for, like, almost 20 years. So, now to see him in the big leagues is, like, pretty awesome. Yeah, that's like, cool. From that's a cool. personal side. Is his dad yeah. is his dad the one that was so jacked? Was he the was he the dude that was just <laughs> the one that looks like Scott? Yeah, it looks like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like Scott through cardio I have day. his father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was the strength coach for the White Sox forever. And now he works for MLB. He does the combine. He does the. Mm-hmm. He was he was working in Arizona as like a strength coordinator. He does a bunch of the stuff. Is this an Adam Larose situation where he brought his kid around and and it started to cause beef with no, the team no, at all? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, but it was just funny because like you try, you know, you guys know like back in the day the weight rooms were tiny, right? They're way bigger now. So we had like a little tiny room, and we're trying to get our workout in, and his dad's helping us. And then and then Alec is like literally the bozu balls. He'd be like jumping up. You're trying to like do whatever and there's not enough room and he's jumping from bozu ball to bozu ball throwing the like you're like damn i need this kid out of the way <laughs> you remember that shit we can talk about that yeah. another day with laroche though and they were getting on him that was different, bringing though. his kid yeah, yeah. That was different. That was I'm a, listen i'm a huge proponent of bringing kids in the club I yeah don't, don't get me wrong oh I jonesy always had who was in there with you jonesy was it ian desmond's kid there was somebody or no it somebody in uh in the Baltimore club, not in Desmond. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Miguel, uh, Miguel Tejada's son, first off. Yep. And he gave him one rule. Do whatever you want, Poppy. Anybody say to, can bring him to me. This kid be in people's lockers. I'm like, get your little badass out of here. Okay? <laughs> get your, what are you doing? But then you got Melvin Mora and his sons. And he had, he had, he had five, uh, I don't even know, quintuplets, but he had two boys. They sit there at, at his locker and just wait, just be the sweetest kid. And then Tejada's son just going all around picking stuff up. He's like, hey, man, if you don't get your little badass out of here. But, no, I got a great story about kids in the, in the clubhouse. I'm not going to name the, the, the players, the, the parents. But it was one of our, it was our coach's kids. They were in our batting cages. You know how the kids come in the summertime to spend time with their dads. And, you know, it's like 2 o'clock. I'm, I just walk by the cage, and I hear this, this bickering. It's one kid, one coach's son, and another coach's son. And uh, they're like, hey, I'm not going to follow your rules. He's like, my dad's a – I ain't gonna because if I said you're gonna know, he's my dad's this. And he was like, I don't give a damn who your dad is. I'll punch you. And I overheard this. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, yes. And I just kept going. I ain't gonna inter- I'm not gonna interrupt none of that stuff. <laughs> but like, they got them kids, they be in there, they be having their own squabbles too. Little spoiled little ass kids. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, you, you know, like, living the good great. life in there. Yeah. When I was at the, in 14, when I was singing Sweet Caroline with the Red Sox, Jonesy, <laughs> my son, my son was, he was, I don't know how old, what, seven years ago. So he was about 10, nine, 10 years old. He'd come in every day. We had or- D'Angelo Ortiz. We had uh, Koji Uihara's kid. We had all, all these kids. Like, we had a whole squad of kids in there every day, right? We get called into the, we get called a meeting about July. We suck. And, and John Farrell has a meeting and says, boys, no more kids in the clubhouse. And 
we all looked around like, what? And he goes, they're distracting y'all from playing. We're like, it ain't, it ain't the kids. The kids are helping us. We just suck. <laughs> right? And yeah, Dustin Pedroia, Dustin Pedro- it was great because after a game, the kids are in there. They, they make you forget about stuff. But Dustin Pedroia, he's sitting there and – he, he, my kids, and they all hit one day, and, and my, they're all up in the Boston clubhouse from the cage, and all of a sudden, Petey comes in, and he, he, not, he taps my kid on the shoulder, and he's like, Austin, come here, follow me. And Austin's like, what do I do? And he's like, we're going to the cage. And so he walks down there, and he grabs Koji's kid, and he grabs D'Angelo, he takes them all down there. And I'm thinking, like, this is going to be pretty cool. And they all come back about five minutes later. I said, what happened? He goes, we didn't pick up the balls, Dad. Petey made us come all down and <laughs> pick up the balls. And I'm like, well, that's a good lesson. You hit them, you pick them damn balls up. I love that. Nice. Wow. And from this moment, my son, he hits them, he picks them damn balls up. up. It worked. Yeah. There's such valuable lessons that, I mean, our kids are able to to have. I mean, it's just what a black. Like, I remember I brought my kids in. They were young. We're bringing them in the clubhouse. They just, my youngest, my, well, my oldest, first thing he did, he wanted to get the push card. I'm like, you want to do laundry? He's just going around. He's two years old, pushing a cart around everybody's locker room. Like, do you want to do laundry? So, all right, hey, have some fun. But that's, it's invaluable having guys. Like I said, Alec, like you grew up, like he grew up around you guys. And like that molds him into being uh, a good professional. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's, we, the talent gets us here, but you got to be, a, you have to have that professionalism. And that, I mean, you could tell he's, he has that, uh, that professionalism for the game. For sure. I, that. I my kid, my two, my kids. I'm not going to go into all my kids' stories because th- it'll come up. We got, I, I got some good ones, but that was for me. That was a rule. Like they only come in after we win, because ain't no nobody got time for an annoying kid if you lose and you go for four. But the other thing is, like, if they ever messed around in the clubhouse, they just they wouldn't be allowed back in. So my kids were the best behaved. They would pick up all the balls. We would make all the other guys hit the balls. And then they would stand outside the cage and come in and hit them. So they, so they earned the right to be able to hit in a cage after we were done. But, I mean, so many, so many life lessons. I mean, we're just talking about making the big leagues because we had Alec on. But, shoot, like just enjoyment. Like my son was – it was in 17. My son was in Little League. And, like, their favorite player that year, 2017, was Aaron Judge. Well, I get traded to the Yankees. My locker is between Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge. And I swore my son was going to cry the first time he met Aaron Judge. And now, like, the dude sent him a, uh, a Christmas gift. Like, so it's just relationships, like, that show these dudes are real, but guys that they looked up to other than, you know, us awesome dads. It's a lot of pseudo uncles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jonesy, Kratz was that guy. Kratz was that dad. Kratz was that dad. You don't talk, boy, unless you're spoken to. (laughs) You sit in the locker with face in the locker only. (laughs) No, like there was teams. Go ahead. Rebut, Kratz. Go ahead. No, I I, it wasn't no, they the biggest thing, like, look them in the eye. Like, look them in the eye, shake their hand, and like it, it really it makes a difference because you're there a lot. My kids they went with me wherever I was. They didn't go on road trips, but they would be there during the whole season. My wife homeschooled them. So they were there the whole time. And it was a huge life lesson. It really, it, it's really helped them now, like get to know people, get to know adults. And some people be like, Oh, you can't bring kids into the clubhouse. You know, the things that they hear. No, like for me, the things they hear, like it's real life. You can't, you can't just keep your kids in a, you know, in a cocoon and like keep them safe from everything. Like it's, and I play, I same with you, AJ. I played on teams where people were like, Oh no, 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 no kids. I don't, we don't, that, that's a distraction. No, it's not bro. Not like get a clue. It's not a distraction. The like they're the most important thing in my life for sure. People without kids are saying then there are teams, there were teams. I don't think anymore, but like the Braves, no kids. No kids allowed. Ken Griffey in the Jr. didn't sign with the Braves because they wouldn't let him bring his kid into the clubhouse. No way. Is true that story. true? True story. My, I'm proud to say my son was the first one with the Braves to ever come in the clubhouse. I broke that rule. Did you tell him to screw off? No, I like I slowly ingratiated him into the team, like in spring training, which was right, was right here. Yeah. So he'd be at every spring training game, and after I'd come out, I'd like bring him in the clubhouse with me. He'd just sit in the locker, and then by like. June, he had his own locker. And he had, was shagging every day with the boys. That's awesome. Like, he was part of the team. It was great. They looked forward to seeing him every day. That was some breaking news right there. Ken Griffey didn't sign with the Braves because of the 
Yeah, because Bobby Cox is anti-kids. That's good shit right there. Yeah. Hey, we got a special guest joining us right now from Team USA, part of an absolute vibe this weekend. Lance Lynn is joining us. Lance, what's going on? How's the WBC treating you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're having a heck of a time, that's for sure. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Are there Dude. kids in the clubhouse? We were just talking about it. Is everyone bringing their kids to this thing? <laughs> uh, they're, they're, we have them. They're all over the uh, hotel and all that. But uh, clubhouse-wise, I mean, they got us pretty locked down in there. So uh, no, no kids in the clubhouse at this, at this point. But they're with us uh, everywhere we go here. So, Lance, I, I mean, great job the other night, Saturday night. I was there. Jonesy was there. Uh, but my question is, first of all, only four innings. You have, you are now officially old man status because, I mean, the old Lance Lynn would have fought for at least a fifth, if not a sixth inning. And second of all, dude, you threw so many sliders and curveballs now. What has happened? You used to be like 91% heater. Here we go. So you're an old man now. Congratulations. Welcome to the old man club. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I can play till I'm 40. So I'm, I'm inventing new things. Uh, makes it fun. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, when they told me I was done after four, uh, I did think they were joking at first, and then, uh, but you know, we're in a we're in a winter winter go home mode, so you understand it, especially with our bullpen, knowing that they're full full go, everybody's ready to rock. So uh, I understand it. You don't like it, but uh, yeah, man, it was a fun atmosphere. I'll tell you that. Vince Way, was it your fist pump? Really was it your fist pump after the fourth inning when you struck him out and you gave the fist pump crotch grab? Yeah, go at the dugout. Was that what got you out of the game? I think so. I think that uh, maybe Zero and, and Andy thought that I that might have been it. That might have been my last go at it. Uh, <laughs> got everything out right there. I was like, no, nah, that's usually when I get going. That's what that means. It's it's time to ride. What's up, Lance? How you doing, Adam? Here, um, obviously, hell of a performance. I mean, love love your career. Love the enthusiasm. Obviously, you pitch with you pitch with energy. You pitch with emotion. How is it? pitching in this environment you know because that's the whole biggest thing right now is everybody saying this is exhibition and this is it. the passion that there was no exhibition game the other night that was not how has it been like that just just amping your you got to amp yourself up even more for this tournament oh yeah definitely um dude, everyone's like hey what's this feel like and all that i go it's everything i could imagine playing in uh, as a kid you know, all coming into one thing um you know you have world series that have this type of atmosphere but there's no like this is the feeling of both sides being cheered for throughout the game, booed and all that. Like, there's difference usually when you're in a World Series game or something like that. It's just the, the whatever teams at home is usually, you know, you know they they rule the crowd. Right here, there's both sides. So, um, you know, I'm looking at it as a as a as a giant overgrown 35 year old kid doing this right now, and I, I'm having a blast. Everyone's like, oh, I have the energy. I was like, well, I pitch with that during the season, but it comes out a little bit easier and a little bit quicker here, and there's nothing like it for sure. Hell yeah. Lance, Lance, are you are you underrated? Are you an underrated What's that? pitcher? Are you an underrated pitcher? Like, in, in your mind, do you feel like dudes underrate? Like, do you think everybody underrates you? Like, Cy Young, three, three of the last four years – in the American League, you've been a top six Cy Young. You were sixth, fifth, and third. And the only person that was ahead of you was Garrett Cole. And yet, they're only giving you a two-year deal. Like, are you underrated? I mean, the fact that you're asking me the question, you know I am. So, uh, well, I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're no, not. I think, I think I'm one of those guys that, you know, people that, that have played the game, people that are around the game, uh, they, know, they know what I'm about. Um, sometimes, you know, that's how it happens. You're, you're the guy that, uh, you know, might not get the, the publicity or whatever that might be, but that's not who I am either. I'm going to show up every day. I'm going to do everything I can to help my team win. And that's how I've been my whole career. Um, you know, some people don't like the way that I, I go about, uh, competing, but you know, my teammates, I take care. Uh Oh, uh -oh. Got that bad internet Yeah. yeah. hotel. Is he back? Got me? Still got I think him. we got you again. Hold on. We lost you for a sec. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Are you Hotel like the Yankees? Wi -Fi. You don't pay for the Wi-Fi? You don't pay <laughs> like the Yankees? They make you Hotel pay for the Wi-Fi? Wi get it. Hotel <laughs> Wi-Fi. We got too many people in this place. Uh, I'll say, listen, Judge, I played with Lance for half a season. That's my boy. Yeah. Like, him and I, man, we, had, we drank a lot of beer together. We hung out. We talked a lot of shop. And that was one of my, like, I didn't go for a month. And they're like, well, you're going to catch Lance Lynn. He only throws one pitch, so go get him. He went out and yeah. dealt against Cueto in Cincinnati. So, like, 
don't don't underestimate like he's not underrated in my book crowd so he might be in yours but trust me if you if i got a guy that's got to go out and win a game i'm taking lance lynn and a lot of the time over a lot of other guys that's what i mean that's what i'm saying like this dude you like people don't like the way you go about what you do like what are you talking like you go out and win the name of the game is win like you give guys innings you win you like you stay in until you can get that w like to me like i want to know why you think why 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 are people underrating you because no aj i'm not thinking that this dude is an absolute horse on the other side of the ball I think I got one knock against him, but it was a lucky, lucky knock. <laughs> a little shooter to right, maybe. What do you think? About oh that? yeah, a little cutter. You you were going too many cutters. Yachty would always call I cutters know. when you were I when you when I was hitting. So right that was easy. <laughs> no, I think it's part of it. You know, when you come up, uh, I came up in St. Louis, right? We had Carpenter, Wainwright, Loesch, Westbrook. Um, like I was the forgotten about kid coming up. And then when it was time for it to be my time, then it was walk, uh, Carlos Martinez. You, people get, you know how it is. Sometimes you just get passed over uh, in a certain city and then they don't think whatever. And I left St. Louis and then here I am now. So, um, you know, I've had a great career. So I can't be mad about anything. And it, it's still going. And I'm having a hell of a time doing it. But sometimes that just happens in this game. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep going going down your path. And, uh you know, all you can do is, is be you. And I've been doing that. And then, you know, back into my career, maybe I, I'm getting more more love than I did early on. But, you know, whatever. I've had a heck of a time doing it. That's for sure. I want to know, um, obviously, you've been in all-star games, being around just the top talent for, you know, 48 hours. All-star games are really quick. You guys are together for three weeks. Um, I remember just being around Goldschmidt, being around Arenado, being around Jimmy Rollins, being around all these other great players, all-stars, and watching their work ethics and seeing, because again, it's still spring training. We still got to get our work in. Has there been anybody that's like, you've been around and like, I know this guy's good, but he works his ass off. And like, just, because I got, I got to see Goldschmidt, who's one of the hardest working guys in the game. And I just watched him like, diligently work. Has there been somebody that just stood out to you? It's like, man, that's why this guy is good. Uh, you know, like you said, you, you see their daily routines and things like that, and you know they're good, and you were like, okay, and then you see them go through it daily, how they're going to prepare for games, how they're going to prepare for whatever they have to do that day. Um, you know, like you said, Goldsmith and Arenado both have a, a daily set routine, uh, how they're going to do everything, and everybody does. Um, as you know, the older you get in this game, you got to do a little bit more each day to get ready. Um, mm-hmm. But just watching everybody kind of go about their business is, is awesome, and you know, you go all-star games, and, and you don't really get a chance to uh, truly get to know people because 48 hours, you're in and out. Um, being in clubhouses, uh, you know, every day, being on buses and things like that, you really get to know people. Um, I think it's been fun for that aspect. And I think a lot of guys get to know me, too. Uh, you play against me, you're like, man, that guy's a dickhead. And, <laughs> and then we have fun in the clubhouse, and we're doing, we're doing all of our stuff right here, and everyone's like, man, you are not like I thought you'd be. And so I think that's the main part. It's like you get to do the, the human part of things instead of just the, the competitor that you play against off through the other side. You see the human human piece. Um, so that's been awesome. Lance, is, are you still Wayno's little brother? Like, does he still tell you to do everything? Like, how you, because like in St. Louis, he used to be like, no, Lance, you can't do that, Lance. Like, is he, is he grow, is he let you, like, you know, kind of spread your wings a little bit more? I told him when we got here, I go, we're not in St. Louis anymore. You're in my world, old man. So Yes, uh, I love it. Yes. And I'm sure he looked at you and just started laughing. <laughs> we had, we've, we've had, to be honest, man, we've had a great time. Uh, he was telling uh, Miles, he's like, Miles, this, this guy, when he come up, he would do everything he could to make sure he got under my skin. And I was like, yeah, I'm still doing it too. And we're, but we've had a great time, um, you know, kind of, you know, just getting back together. But, uh, you know, Wainwright was always good to me. He took care of me growing up, but he also, uh, you know, he made sure that I, I didn't go too crazy. Um, and that was, uh, it helped me, it helped me hone it in. But, and then I was like, now I will, once I hit 30 and I got out of St. Louis, I was like, now he, he had it, he had me build up so much and kept inside so much. Now I'm yelling at everybody and he started laughing. Tell us about the, uh, phone call to D-Row and how you got into the team. <laughs> I'm hearing there's a little, like, let, let's go through the whole, let's two hours before the phone call. <laughs> all, right, all right uh so we're, we're at hunting camp um i'm with all, like my high school buddies um uh, uh my brother-in-laws and my father-in-law and they're like hey you gonna play in this or not and 
and I'm like, you know, we already had, you know, some steaks on the uh, on the Traeger grill. We're drinking some bourbon by the uh, in a campfire, and they're like, uh, what's the deal? And I was like, well, let's call D Row and see what's up. And they're like, you won't do it, you know, you know how guys do it once you get around and all that. I was like, all right, so I FaceTime D Row. I'm going to tell you, it was probably 11, 11 30, 12 o'clock his time. So I'm FaceTime. He answers the phone. He's like, who is this? And I was like, hey, I go, it's me. Uh, I dropped a, a, I dropped a, another couple words on him, and then he goes, what is going on? I go, I'm in. And he goes, what? And I go, I'm playing. I go, you can't tell me no. And then that's kind of how it went down. He's like, oh, my goodness. Uh, so we had, a, we had a good FaceTime at 11 o'clock at night after some drinks uh, by a campfire. All my buddies were like, it looks like you're in. So that's kind of how it went down. Dero was like, you're, you're definitely in. Um, make your phone call. And, and next thing you know, he's like, yeah, you got it. I want to ask about the, the the reaction to Turner's home run. Obviously, I mean, iconic home run. But the bench, this was the, the I think that was a pinnacle of American emotion. Uh, Jerry Manuel, first one out there. <laughs> bench, first one out there. Dude, I mean, uh, d row didn't want to go out. I was talking, he said, I didn't want to go all the way out there because I'm, I'm a coach, but, like, I had to be out there. Like, where were you at doing all this? I mean, were you inside? Did you come back out? Like, Yeah. I was back in the dugout. Uh, I was screaming. Uh, you know, the inning before, uh, you know, they I got out of a big situation, uh, questionable borderline call, whatever. But you know, we were on high. You know, everybody's jack. Um, and then when he was able to hit that homer, it was just everything that you had built up just kind of let go. So everybody's screaming, everybody's jumping over the fence, everybody, everybody's yelling at the you know the other side. Uh, that's just kind of how it, how it goes in these games. Um, you saw when they hit home runs and stuff like that. They they had some. Uh, some dancing and some things going on. And I think as the game went on, our side was definitely paying attention to everything that, that was happening. And then uh, everything kind of turned right back around on them. And, uh, you know, had a little uh, had a little fun with it, that's for sure. Um, but stuff you can't do during the regular season, you can do here. And, uh, and, you know, everybody's having a hell of a time doing it, that's for yeah. sure. And it's no disrespect. It's just passion. I know his big ass didn't jump over the fence, Lance. I know that. <laughs> I was, he would have fell on that. He would have got stuck. It... No, yeah. So I think McCann got stuck going over, and I saw that. And I saw I stood on the bench and did the step over instead of the, the leg coming over. Uh, so, but, but, yeah, right when he hit it, everybody took off. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to knock somebody over or I'm going to fall myself. So I, I, st- I stood up on the bench so I could just – once everybody's out of my way, I could I could get over it and not hurt anybody. Yeah, there should be a stat cast of the vertical leap of everyone <laughs> after a big celebration and see how everyone's oh, doing. Yeah. Hey, Chris, so you, you got a camera on that dugout where guys <laughs> get up. We need one of those. Fox, hook it up. So Lance, you're playing with Trout among others, and Trout's stand up dude. He was one of the kind of leaders of getting the recruiting going, especially for the position player side. Has anyone given him shit like, yo, this is what uh, playoff vibe is like because he's only played. I mean, he's the best player in the game for like a decade. He's only played one time. They got swept by the Royals in five minutes in 2014. Like best player on on the biggest stage. He looks like a guy that hasn't been in the playoffs before. Uh, you know, and it, it's crazy to think about, man. Uh, playing against him for this long, seeing everything he's accomplished in the game, that like he's only you know had one one crack at it. Uh, you know, it's kind of a shame uh, not being able to see him uh, with everything he's about. Uh, in October, but yeah, there's a lot of like, you know, there's been some things that like guys that have never been in the playoffs are like, everyone's like, Hey, this is what playoffs are all about. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have some jabs and stuff like that. But, uh, when you're talking about a uh, future hall of famer and stuff like that, you try to stay away from jabs because you, you know, you're going to, you're going to have a battle with him during the year and something like that. You don't want to give him a chance. To, that's for sure. Yeah, you, don't give the, you do not want to give the good ones any extra because that's usually when it comes back to bite you later on. Hey, Lance, you're, I'm assuming because you threw the other night, you're done, right? With the WBC, you're done. Yeah, you're yeah. Done I, I asked. Well, the, we, I, I asked the White Sox if I close or something like that uh, tomorrow, and they were like, "Absolutely not." So, um, <laughs> so, so that's what I want to get to the White Sox. Let's let's get we're, now that you're done with the WBC. Let's get to let's get to to the White Sox, right? Uh, your opening day. Are you pitching opening day? No, I think it's going to be Cease. My man earned it last year. He's oh, second yeah. aside okay. um, and things like that. So uh, that's the way I see it. Whoever wins or whoever's highest in the Cy Young the year before automatically gets it, uh, even if the manager has a different opinion. That's what uh, that's my, that's been my thing since St. Louis. Wainwright always said, whoever whoever finishes higher in the Cy Young, that's who gets the opening day. And right, Cease I like definitely it. deserves it. 
I, I like it. I and I agree. But so here's my here's my question. What are things? Obviously, you know me. We, we see each other in Chicago. I'm a White Sox guy. What what uh, what is different this year with Pedro Grifol as opposed to Tony La Russa? Why is a White Sox fan? Should I have hope that things are going to be different, especially after watching Moncada go down again last night with a concussion and, and bruised ribs? Like, what, what's t- sell me hope on the White Sox for all my White Sox people? <laughs> well, you, you don't like seeing that because uh, Yo Yo is one of our guys. Um, we, we need him to be healthy and we need him to be the player that he's. Getting. But we look at the big thing and the number one thing we look at our team health um, right now, um, we're healthy. That are are ready to go and, and doing those things, um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, the year before, when most of the guys are healthy all year and stuff like that, we win 90, 90 plus games. Uh, last year, no health um, and and no depth, we won eighty one games. So when you're looking at a really bad year, uh, really bad luck health wise and things like that, and you still win eighty one games, it gives you the hope you need for this year. Um, so we added some depth pieces. Uh, Rick in the front office added guys that are going to help us, um, you know, uh, as bench guys and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, when it's all said and done, you got to stay healthy and you got to win games. Um, we're starting to, uh, well, unfortunately, some guys have left for the WBC, but we were coming together as a team pretty good. Uh, we're going to have a, a week plus when we get back to, you know, kind of, you know, make sure we're ready to go and do some things. But I think the WBC helped guys too. Um, you look at uh, – Ruiz for Venezuela was absolutely lights out in the WBC. That was huge for him, and that gives us another piece in the bullpen that's going to be enormous, especially since we don't know when Liam's going to get back. So we've got the talent. Um, right now we got the health, and if we can figure out how to uh, make sure we come together as a team uh, with the talent and health that we have, we got a chance to be really good. Who won in golf today? Tell me, like, what? give me a rundown of what happened. Oh, man, we woke up this morning and it was pouring. It was typical South Beach where it was raining everywhere. We did, we decided not to go. Um, and then uh, but I will say that most likely Graveman and I would have had a, had a good a good match. We're both, uh, you know, we're both pretty, pretty close in the same handicap of, a, of, a, of an eight. So it's usually you know, it's got me the last two times and looking forward to the race so I can take some of my money back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so before we let you go, Lance, uh, you're, we talked about White Sox. Uh, Liam Hendricks, do you have any update? Have you talked to him? Uh, obviously, wishing him to get back after his cancer diagnosis. Yeah. Um, the last time I saw Liam, like, to be honest, he was like, I, "This is going way better than I thought." And I was like, "He, he looks great. He's been throwing." Um, we're waiting for. I want to tell you that he's got one more test coming up that tells us. Exactly what we want to know the first of April or the end of uh, this month. So that will tell us a lot going forward. But you know, Liam, Liam's like, oh, once once they get me to go, I'll be back in games and and the next day. And I was like, Liam, calm down, everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, take, give yourself a break. I'm like, Did you get yourself right, and we we need you. You know, when you're ready, he goes, I'll be ready right when they give me to go. And I was like, well, typical Liam fashion. I I hear you, but. Make sure you're good to go. But he's throwing. Uh, he's been throwing bullpens when he when he feels good. So hopefully that means they you know everything is cleared up and he's you know ready to go. And um, I mean you hope to get him back by by June if everything's uh, perfect. In his mind he'll be back in May. I was like, but we'll see. But he's he's looks good. He's you know he looks you know he looks strong. So that's the that's the number one thing. And when you see a guy like that going through it and he's got good spirits and he looks strong. So that's a you know that's a good good sight to see when he comes in. Bubba. That's a great update. Awesome. That's a great update. It's a blessing, That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it is. Hey, Lance, good luck in that damn championship game tomorrow. You're gonna be watching this game tonight in Mexico, Japan. Who you got? Yeah, I gotta figure out. I'm gonna find a find a place to watch it and uh, you know see what we've got going on tomorrow. But uh, you know, it should be a fun game to watch. And then whatever team comes out of it, it's gonna be a hell of a game tomorrow night. Who do you want? Sure. Who do you want? Let's Who do you go. Want to face? You want Mexico? Do or you I want, want Japan? I mean, I'm not gonna. I, you, you know what? You, no, you, you can't can go wrong. Either one. I, I would like to get another shot at Mexico, to be honest okay. with you. But I'd also like to get a shot at. I think is is you supposedly set up to throw the championship game? No, he's no not Yamamoto. Him in a hot, no Yamamoto, but no. Otani might close out the game. Angels are letting him close things out, apparently. Well, yeah. if he's get, if he's if he's slated to be able to close, then I'm I'm gonna have to get on a phone with Rick today and see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know how oh, that goes. Yes. Let me know how that call goes. Hey, yeah. Rick. Uh, yep. Probably. Hey, I, I know exactly how. You know, he's. 
Oh. It's gonna go just like, like that. Just like that. Wait, we got me for a sec, Lance. How's it gonna go? <laughs> How's this call gonna go with Rick on when it's you call? Gonna go. I want to close. Uh, see ya. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we okay. got you back, Lance. No. Uh -oh. oh, I don't think we hear him. Oh, the damn internet. <laughs> Lance, oh, Lance, can't. you hear us? No. Uh -oh. I can hear you a little bit. Okay. Just. <laughs> Just, we appreciate the time, man. How's it going to go with Rick Hahn, though? He's going to hang up like you just hung up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's exactly. going to look at him Cheers, and go, man. <laughs> Production staff, text Lance, thank you for all the gold right there. Yes. That was he awesome. He gone. Yeah. How good is that, though? Do you think he'll actually? No. no? He would want to, though. Wait, why not? Why not at least? Even if he it's... knows what the answer is going to be. Yeah, but if I'm the GM, Doesn't I matter. at least appreciate that no. he's he's that guy for Listen, me. Listen, as a, as, a, as a person that knows the White Sox very well, they will just get, they'll be like, why in the freaking world is this guy calling me? He knows the answer. But they, but also. No, they don't care. It's not up to them. You, yeah, you I just, signed up for the WBC. We just had I'll a whole conversation about want. how it's about the teams and they put restrictions. Lance is a veteran. Jonesy, did we not have this conversation? True. He ain't pitching Mark DeRosa. There ain't. Listen, Mark DeRosa in, ain't no chance. If Lance Lynn goes, I got the okay from the White Sox. Mark DeRosa doesn't have the whatever you want to call him. Yes, to he, put, no, he does not. If Lance Lynn no tells chance. him he'll pitch, no, no. chance. No oh, Wait, chance. then why does Otani get to pitch? Why does Otani? Because they're playing it differently than we're because playing Because just because his team never makes the playoffs and it doesn't matter, he <laughs> no. gets to pitch in the WBC <laughs> as much no, as he wants? No, no. That is some bullshit. It is. But no, because J Japan's been practicing for two months. They're ready to go. Has Otani been practicing for two months? I bet you he has. <sighs> you know, and again, we go back to this. Other countries don't treat this as an exhibition. This is a damn huge thing for other – Jonesy, tell him we've had this conversation. The other teams aren't playing under the same rules. They're not. I mean, because they, it's a, it's a different. A, a team USA wants to win it at their rate. These other teams want to win it at all costs. You see that it's completely different. I simple. Yeah, I I just <laughs> let's put it this way. Let let's let's put it to let's put it to rest. Lance Lynn isn't their best option in the ninth inning anyway. He's their best option to start. He got them to where they need him to be. But I'm I'm on board. Scotty kind of kind of hit on it a little bit. Like if I'm if I'm Rick Hahn, I'm like, yeah, I appreciate that you called because this is the kind of guy that we, you know, mm -hmm. signed up for two years, mm -hmm. forty million dollars. Like mm -hmm. I get it, but mm -mm. trust not me, a shot. someone that knows the White Sox, that ain't how they look at it. That's not how they look at it. Mm -mm. They're like, why is this annoying bastard calling me right now? No, <laughs> no you don't think they're saying, yo, Lance is my Dude, guy. Dude, listen, I, in, 2000, I, in 2011, I, was, I broke my wrist. I was on the DL. I was supposed to go on rehab. I was taking BP. I came back. I called Kenny Williams. I said, Kenny, I'm ready to go. I don't need to go three days on rehab. He goes, you know damn well we had this in place, this plan in place for two weeks now. You know, you've been out for 15 days. You need a rehab. I don't, why, why are you even calling me? Click. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going on rehab to Charlotte tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he gave you the business. But, I mean, I'm, that's just, you know, they're like, we've had this plan. If, even if, I mean, yeah, well, they appreciate it. Sure, it's a good gesture. But at the end of the day, they're going to be like, why is this damn dude calling me? Just do what we say. Get on the rehab. Exactly. Okay. Click. As, he, as Lance hung up on us, that's how we <laughs> <it> go. <laughs> All right, so we'll do predictions at the end. I just want to run through a couple things um social media wise that we have prepared here and before we do that uh, we'll pick two but you mentioned it one of you mentioned it earlier did you see that story about the wi-fi with the yanks kratzy you played on the yanks so you got to be our, our resident yankee here um there's a story on i think it was si and an insider has it too that said that on the the delta flights or something and i love delta by the way that's really? my that's my airline no Delta what, you American. like American, American better? I don't like none. I like, I like international ones. Yeah, international <laughs> ones are another Guitar. level. But with Singapore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, where you get your own damn room. It's like flying exactly. on a private jet. Yeah, but on the power rankings within the United States, most of the airlines suck. Delta's yeah. pretty good, at least for me. What, what do you like? Well, you not flying? American. I will not. I That's what I'm saying. American sucks Delta, nowadays. Listen, in Orlando, you'll see that we've got flights everywhere, so it's good, but. Delta or United for me from the place. Yeah, Delta and United are better. Anyway, you have to pay for Wi-Fi right. if you're a Yankee. No, you're a damn Kratzy. Yankee. 
Do they make you pay for Wi-Fi? Because they're throwing that out there trying to make the Yanks cheap. And, like, we'll we'll give it to an ownership group if they're not doing something right. But I just had a hard time believing that story was true. And that's where I wish, like, this would be the boss move. Like, Steinbrenner comes out and he goes, yeah, that story, bullshit. We actually, like, bought them all computers, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> No, one, one, one way that people who, who are rich stay rich is they don't waste their money. But look, like, unless something's changed in 21 and 22, ain't nobody running their credit card on the, on the first class seats flight that we were flying on with the Yankees. Like, it's a, no, we had, we had internet, everybody, everybody bought uh, Nintendo Switches and they were playing Mario Kart on the plane together. You ain't getting, you ain't getting cellular service on your Nintendo Switch. No, we were good. Can somebody text a Yankee and like confirm that? Because I, Jonesy, there's no way that the Yanks are like, all right, everybody, get your credit cards out. Nine I'll dollars ask. for I'll ask right now. No, no one. Can you no, text no. someone? That's ridiculous. You'd have liked to be on my team playing because um, I'd say every other road trip, I'd have a three-piece Popeyes basket and everybody, everybody seat. Everybody instead of eating this airplane boring paninis and club sandwiches. <laughs> Yeah, man, get yourself some fried chicken and some biscuits real quick. And I go up to the front and I see like the older media, they be looking around just beating that shit down. Like, yeah, look at y'all, man. Y'all want to say hey, black people eat fried chicken. Nah, y'all eat too. Everybody eat fried chicken. Who's going to turn down fried chicken? <laughs> I'm not. Actually, Nobody. I love Popeyes. No. Ooh. I mean, I don't know what Baltimore was doing, but I was going to say. Man, we used to get Chick-fil-A. We used to have, we used to get really, really good food. Yeah, yeah, they for the Marlins? Yeah, yeah, seriously. I don't know about the <laughs> Orioles, but damn, you need to come to Red Sox and sing Sweet Caroline. I, I, went to got, I went to get that myself. I had to because I didn't want all this. I mean, we had Chick-fil-A. We can have pizza. We can have all this stuff. We had crabs sometimes. That plant yeah. stank like hell when you have crabs. Ooh, that's a bad idea. Very, very bad idea. But no, we switch it up. Junior, we'd go to New York. We'd have Junior's Cheesecake uh, always come through. Like, there was always, always something because airplane food is boring. Redundant. Look what the Mets got to eat the other day. Team bonding event, and th that was on the 18th, so it happened Yum. on the 19th, which is Saturday. Crawfish boil, organized Hell by yeah. Max Scherzer, who was on with us last week. That that happens a lot, right? Those events that are put on, or a party, or a get-together with the team. Yeah. Spring training, all The rich dude pays for a big thing. Yeah. Is it, like, real bougie, too? No. It's like you come as you are and eat. Yeah, Hang but out. they they don't like like absolutely fill the place with incredible food. No, yeah, yeah, like well, hire some people to make well, sure Scherzer it's all lives done right. In, Scherzer lives in Jupiter. down there, Jupiter, right yeah. where the right where the uh, the Mets are close. So like the guys just come down, like guys that live in their place. Like Canerco used to have us over to his house in Arizona because he lived there. The right? whole team, the whole team. Mm -hmm. We rent a bus and we'd all go over to his house and you know, mess his house up for one night and then he kick us out and be mad at us the next day. But at least he did it right. I mean, yeah, that's what it's about. Like, that I, is. like in uh, 16, I had all the Braves over here for a party. We had a big party. You get it catered. You get it everything. I mean, that's that's what you do as a veteran guy. You have all the guy, every, guys over, have a big bonding moment, a big party, and then go to spring training the next day and everyone feels closer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Jim Tomey, Jim Tomey took, took Papelbon – to the woodshed on some freaking on a bet and he's like oh i'm not i don't need any extra money he's like i got i got dinner i got lunch for tomorrow next day at the clubhouse like outside this dude was cooking fresh lobsters up it was like the biggest like take home spread you've ever seen and everyone was hanging out but he's he's like oh it's not on me it's all Pavel Bond's money <laughs> <laughs> And Papelbon paid him in quarters too. That was the best part. He had a bat. He had a bat box, and he paid him all in quarters. He went to three, or he had the club. He go to three or four different banks, and got all the money that he owed him. I don't even know how much it was, but he could oh. barely carry the bat, the bat box, full of quarters, and he put it on Tommy's, Tommy's chair. He's like, "What am I gonna do with all these quarters?" That's good. That's good. I like that. Hey, all right. Two more things to show you. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. still hits tanks, but you got to let his kids come watch him play. Otherwise, he's not going to sign with you. True. That is true. And listen, I, I played with, I was, we used to have the Griffey jersey behind me, but everyone's watching Griffey. You know, you ask Griffey, you know, how do you hit? And he has a little, the little swing man. He said, take the little swing man and hit the ball. That's it. So there weren't a lot of thought process into in the Griff's hitting home runs, but I uh, still got it for an old man. Sweet swing, man.
What a sweet swing. Oh, looks good. Yeah, still yeah. looks the same, doesn't it? He's a little not, not everyone can, little can bash homers like that. I mean, if you step in, you hitting tanks? Give me a couple swings. And you'll hit a tank. Yeah. You Jonesy, don't lose it. Crafty. Jonesy, tell him you don't lose it. No, I can't run, but I, yeah, I still yeah. can hit. Yeah. yeah. Kratzy? Yeah. I never could run, but I'll hit a homer in BP. <laughs> yeah. I remember okay. Tony. Just when checking. I, when I was with the Twins, Tony Oliva was like, I don't know, Tony Oliva's got to be 80 years old now probably, right? He was like probably 65 years old. He used to be like, watch this, boys. And he'd go over there and he'd hit home run. And he'd always say, watch the snaky jump because there was woods behind the Twins minor league thing. He'd go up there and bam, bam, bam. And you're like, no way. This dude's 60 years old. And he's bringing three swings. He's two homers. That's awesome. All right, one more for you. Eduardo Escobar playing for Team Venezuela. And th this isn't nice. He has whatever the phobia word is for Gatos. fear of cats. Gatophobia. Yeah, he hates cats. And look, Jonesy, Salvador Perez playing security guard, keeping him near the cat. I mean, that's not a fair fight. Salvi looks like he's going to eat Eduardo <laughs> Escobar for breakfast. <laughs> What are you worried about little cats for, man? It's not like it's a sphinx or something like that. It's just a little kitty cat, right? But, hey, some people got fear. We got fear of things. I don't like clowns. So, uh, <laughs> if, I see, uh -oh. if I see clowns, I'm going the other way. <laughs> I know we're sending into Miami tonight. Clowns? A clown, clown show. <laughs> clown show. You got real fear go of clowns? A real fear of clowns? Like a, a crazy fear, but, like, I, I, I just don't need to be around them. I see Michael, too much. Michael Young, Michael Young, do you ever, you guys ever talk about fear? Oh, if you see him tonight. Oh, no, not, yeah, not tonight. Tomorrow night. Michael Young hey, hates clowns. Hates clowns. Mm -hmm. And Andrus and uh, Beltre used to, they used to, they used to get on him all the time about it. And I never believed it. And one of the guys on the team with the Phillies got one of the, got, you know, got one of the color clown hair things and he put it on. And he was in Mike, Mikey was in the cage hitting and he put it on. So he ducked down. So you could only see like the hair over top of the turtle. And he turned around and the look on his face, he was so angry. Like it wasn't even like he thought, I don't know what he thought, but he was so angry about the fact that there was a clown on the field and you couldn't fake his, what, what he looked like. It's, I hope we. I hope you get to ask him tomorrow. <laughs> ask him about clowns. He hates it. I will. I will. At some point, I want to do a show where we like focus on you know sometimes do interviews where you just focus on one story, right? Like you bring Michael Young on and you just you grill him for like 10, 15 minutes just on the clown thing. Yeah, let's do you it. You know, so uh, we he, should make it happen at some. He'll point. tell you it's a good, it's a good reason of why he hates clowns, but he'll tell you why. I wouldn't I wouldn't put that man's business out there. I want to get to the bottom of that. Okay, so let's do slap hands, a couple things, and then we'll finish with our predictions for tonight's game. Uh, military base of the day, shout out. Joint base in San Antonio supports a population of 80,000. Joint base of the United States Army, uh, Fort Sam Houston, the U.S. Air Force Randolph Air Force Base, Lackland Air Force Base, and Martindale Army Airfield. Uh, we salute you. Hope you're enjoying the World Baseball Classic as well. We appreciate you. Let's do Kratz hats. Shout out to a little minor league action, Kratzy. What do you got? Yeah, we had a big league hat on Friday with the uh, St. Patty's Day hat, but we're going back. We're going back to the grind, back to the jungle. And it's a real jungle in April. This is Buffalo, the Ooh. Buffalo Bison. It is cold up there. They got pictures all over the stadium. I remember I got sent down one time, and it was May 5th. I got sent down from Toronto, and it was May 5th, and there was snow on the field, and they were like, we're good. We'll play. The sun will come out by the time the game starts, but no BP. And we're out there, and Marcus Stroman is doing a photo shoot with snow <laughs> on the field, and they had cleared the mound off. I mean, you can't, like, only in Buffalo. Wow. I want to see those pictures, by the way. Yeah. It was, it was something for Toronto. Back in the day. Photo shoot prospect to the big leagues kind of thing <laughs> in the snow like get me the hell out of here <laughs> i mean deep there was just snow on the grass yeah that's badass though and here's my minor league shout out so ben joyce at his fifth straight uh, scoreless outing of cactus league play on friday against the royals um phil nevin uh, manager of the angels said uh he registered 104 on the radar gun um, it's seven big leaguers have ever reached that according to pitch tracking data. Um, 
He has previously thrown a record 105.5 pitching at the University of Tennessee. Pretty good. That's that's pretty that's a good. a weapon for Phil Nevin to use if he, if he gets to the big leagues this year. 106 if you know where it's going. Yeah. That's, that's pretty fast. That's pretty awesome. You can have a flat fastball right down the middle and that'll work, no? Yeah. I don't care play. it is. 106, you better get it that'll going down. That'll freaking play. All right, prediction time. This was fun. So who wants – raise your hand if you want to go first. Um, Mexico against Japan, especially if you want to be bold, okay? I see Jonesy raising his hand. Let me give the uh, the lines, okay? Eight and a half is the number for the over-under total runs. It's Mexico plus 220 money line. Japan um, is favored to win by two and a half if you want to take that at plus 100. Anyone going with an upset? I, think Mexico, I actually think Mexico has, I think Mexico might do it. I think Mexico is going to win. I think Mexico is going to win. I'm taking Mexico money line, and I might touch a little bit of the plus two and a half because I think it'll be close. I think, I think Japan's too deep. Jones, do you think Japan's winning? Is a high scoring or low too, scoring? I, I think they're too deep, and I think they'll put up seven or eight. Wow, I think, okay. I mean, I'd say eight to four game or something like that, but I think Japan's just, they're just too deep. Crazy. I think, I think, I think Mexico takes the lead early because Sandoval's, so tough on those lefties, but I think they're just—he's—they're going to grind them out, and I think Japan beats them. And I'm—I'm I'm even taking—I'll—I don't know—I I can't take the two and a half, but I would definitely—I'm going Japan straight up. I think the over. I think there's going to be some runs scored. Yep. I think, yeah. I think Mexico figures it out. Let's go, baby! I'm well, tailing AJ we'll have that tonight. Rematch. <laughs> Let's Dude, go, baby! I mean, listen—I know everybody wants Japan USA in the final. But you rematch Mexico, there'll be some fired up USA boys. Hell yeah! Run that yes, music one more time. We're on that music one more time. Yes, we got. I'm. I'm going three bets tonight. One, Mexico money line plus two twenty. Two, I think it'll be close, so I'll take them at plus two and a half as well. And three, definitely going over. Definitely going over. Over has been crushing in this World Baseball Classic. Mexico's got a good lineup. Sazaki, how long is he pitching? And they'll they'll get to him eventually. And they know Jonesy scattering report. That's right. Make him throw that <laughs> damn flat fastball. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard though, man. It's a hundred. <laughs> it ain't ninety-two. Get that foot down. Hey, we we don't have to face it. Fuck it. Have fun with yeah, it. One hundred percent. Get that foot hey, down. Hey, enjoy the game, Jones. Are you going tonight or you're going tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be. Tonight. You're going tonight too. Night. Also, nice. Mm-hmm. Love it. Hey, FT Live every single weekday, eleven a.m. Eastern time. What should they do? Subscribe, please. Subscribe. Subscribe. Tell Big ass guests. Subscribe. It's yes. free. Big guests on Tuesday as well. Look out on our socials for who's coming on there. We will see you then.